Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the second part of our series, What If Deku Cross-Dressed. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Kuji17 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Part 1. Third Person POV Once all was prepared the group of three made their way to the designated center of the soon-to-be cement maze. Cementos then raised the walls and once all was prepared he gave present Mike to go ahead to begin the countdown. Whether a team or an individual, all the groups lined up at the pre-designated entrance spots. 3, 2, 1, go. He said with a blowhorn going off singling for everyone to enter the maze to start, and as they did, absolute chaos broke out. The walls of the maze had just enough space between them for two average-sized students to walk beside one another. But for people like Rikido Sato or Mizo Shoji who had bigger builds, as such they could not walk side by side with other students in these hallways. On the bright side in exchange for this movement downside for a possible teammate, it also allowed the two to block off any end of the hallways. The moment Bakugo entered the maze he used his explosions to fly forward blowing up three Class 1B students in front of him. Right now the only thing the young hero cared about was proving how much stronger he was than the other students. His plan to do so was to beat up the hero in third year, before grabbing Deku, intent on blasting anyone who got in his way of saving the useless nerd. In fact Katsuki Bakugo was quite irate at the fact that the nerd was pretty much carried all the way to the third round. As a result taking up a slot for possibly more worthwhile punching bag for him to let loose on later in the third round. Nice plan losing points jackass. The three boys of 1B called out to him picking each other up. Actually my young students, he only loses points if you were holding Midoriya, but since you were not that was a completely legal attack. Nezu said taking a sip of his tea. You mean he can beat us up as much as he wants until we grab the cross-dressing princess. The same boy as before retorted to the principal. Nezu calmly dabbed his mouth with his handkerchief before clearing his throat to respond to the student. Yes, yes that is correct. Nezu said ending the conversation as the three boys continued running through the maze with hope to swipe the princess so as to use them as a human shield against Bakugo and others like him. Unfortunately for them they ran into Momo Trio who gave them a similar explosive response upon seeing them, despite the warning they received earlier from Recovery Girl. As students raced around corners, most fled from the other team not wanting to pick a fight right now wasting their strength. While there was others who wanted to get rid of some of the competition, as a result four students were eliminated before anyone reached Izuku. This was the result of the four people being blasted through the walls to the outside, one by Momo and the other three by Bekugo. As for who were his unlucky three victims, they were the group of guys who got blown up by him earlier, but this time they would not be getting back up to fight. Momo on the other hand, her victim was going to be two of her classmates, but then they threw Nuno who nearly bumped into them turning a corner. The general studies girl clothes were in tatters but fortunately for her she found a way out. Before the audience could see her in her birthday suit she accidentally touched of the guys but Hugo took out. However now he was reduced to wearing shoes that were too small for him, along with socks that were too small, and her torn up underwear she was wearing from before. Unfortunately for him Izuku was on the small size in terms of foot size to other guys while she was on the bigger end for girls. This resulted in the two being the same shoe size so their teachers did not notice this before. Despite this being her fault however he swore to get back at Bakugo blaming him for his humiliation. Instead of the general studies girl as he was unconscious when she touched him so he did not understand the full details. The first to get to the room at the center were the dragon, the dragon's fire breath, and the quote-unquote princess were waiting was the duo of Gyro and Yuraka. Are you sure this is the right room and not a decoy Kayoka? Achako asked her teammate in a hushed voice not wanting to alert other nearby teams. As much as she wanted to trust her teammate, with Principal Nezu it is said he planted traps in previous year's events. Considering I am hearing giggling and someone saying prepare to face the tickling sensation of I her ladyship's fire breath then yes I am almost certain that the year 3 student is currently tickling Izuku right now. Kayoka said in a deadpan tone to her teammate feeling insulted the enemy is not taking them seriously. With a nod they ran and noticing how the one entrance made it impossible for either to sneak in. As for the crowd who was watching this from the stands and in their homes, many had a hard time keeping a straight face. Between switching between all the students running around you were watching the princess getting tickled by the third year student. This is so adorable even I am jealous of our year 3 student right now. Present Mike said biting into a handkerchief for comical effect despite Aizawa and Nezu being the only ones able to see it. Aizawa was showing an annoyed expression similar to the dragon hero as they both were wanting for the third year to take this seriously. Seriously Midoriya, did you forget that everyone can watch you goofing off right now? Aizawa thought this to himself shaking his head in slight shame at both him and the third year who he has always found too energetic for his liking. Nezu on the other hand was cackling in excitement as he saw all the different hero agencies talking about Midoriya. Granted they saying things like they would be a good distraction for press conferences or she would make a great poster girl for us so his expectations for Midoriya to get genuine offers were fairly low. 
However, if we cannot find a suitable person among his agency offers, then I always suppose we can fall back on Gran Torino to take him Nezu thought before almost having to pop his eyes back into his head when he saw the two girls rush the dragon hero. All might however as if sensing Nezu thought shivered recollecting the memories of his training with the man but not sure why now of all times he was doing so. Nejire Hado being a skilled hero despite her momentary lack of seriousness reacted the moment she heard running. Jumping onto her boss's back she grabbed her flamethrower and took her position to aim at the two girls running through. The room was barely twice the length of Ryukyu dragon form with it being barely twice her height as well as she stood up on her hind legs. Granted unlike the rest of the maze that was equal height it actually had a roof with only a few small holes for light here and there. Meaning on all fours her tail had a high chance of smashing you into the wall if you got too close to her. However with the flamethrower if you got too far Nejair Hado would use the fire to either push you back out of the room or towards a wall. As a result if one tried to get out of range of either one they would immediately get into the range of the other or just get too far away to snatch the princes from them. However something neither the hero nor the third year expected happened that day. The brown-haired one threw her teammate over her head above them, seeing her earlobes twitch and seeing her floating Nejair figured out her attack though. Aiming the flamethrower as close to her as she could Nejair let loose the flame at the same moment the earlobes shot out at her. The power of the flame pushed Gyro sideways causing the first year girl attack to land on the ground. In front of her teammate, Yuraka who was about to dodge a tail swing from the dragon hero by using her quirk to float past and grab Izuku was sent blasting up due to her partner's deflected attack. This caused them to collide in midair, which at some point caused Yuraka to release them sending them crashing to the ground on top of Kendo who just made to the entrance of the room. Kendo's original plan was to use whoever was fighting in front of her as a distraction while she ran in to grab Izuku, only to get dogpiled by her distraction. The dragon hero shook her head at this sight as she was expecting a bit more from the two girls who survived the villain attack. Granted their double-sided attack was a smart move, except they forgot to take into account how your rocket quirk made it easy for Gyro to be pushed aside due to zero gravity. Then there was the fact they also had no clear way to get Izuku out of here after reaching him, which defeats the purpose of reaching him in the first place. Honestly even with me holding back for them to have a chance, they are still struggling more than expected. Ryukyu said before hearing a laugh and smelling what she swore was acid. She stood on her hind legs wrapping the two students with her under her wings to protect them from it. The judges liked the duo's approach to try and distract the dragon hero while rushing in as fast as possible to grab the princess. Midnight however was enjoying the show quite a bit, though she had to admit that despite her side deal she felt bad for the two girls. I must say, it was a good attempt to rescue the hostage. But if only they used a little more force in their strategy then they might have been able to rescue the hostage. Nezu said enjoying his premium tea. Though the sleep-deprived teacher of the duo liked how they kept the property damage to a minimal with their plan he had to agree. If those two came at her with a more aggressive strategy then maybe one of them could have slipped away with Izuku already Aizawa thought this looking at his students crumpled into a heap on the floor. Then again neither of them could have survived the rest of the competition if they lost the other. The racer had thought after considering all the other powerhouses in their class in terms of combat. With both their quirks being more technical and skill reliant, rather than overflow with the raw power of Bekugo or Todoroki. Either of the two boys could easily take them down in the enclosed spaces of the maze walls then snatch Midoriya from them. Speaking of which he saw a section of the maze become covered in ice, freezing five contestants in place. It seems that two groups and a solo runner all tried to take Todoroki out first instead of trying to find Midoriya first. Nezu observed worrying about how much more intense this round of basically football but with a human in a dress instead of a football was getting to be. Aizawa and present Mike on the other hand, while well, Aizawa on the inside anyway, was laughing at the aggressive strategy backfiring so splendidly on those five students. Forget a cold shoulder people, after that there everything is cold, present Mike said after his short laugh. Back at the room two new challengers ran in, this time it was the indecency duo as Toro Hagakure was naked. While Mina Ishida was wearing her hero costume shoes and a highly acid-resistant purple bikini coated in Teflon, which Mina had made for her hero costume. It was supposed to be worn underneath his underwear so if she pushed her acid to her limits she would not need to worry about running around naked after a fight. Teflon was also known as polytetrafluorothylene. It is used to coat a variety of products because it is waterproof, cuts down on friction, and creates a non-stick surface. It is also one of the most acid-resistant materials in the world, however due to a lack of friction her entire hero costume could not be coated. So other than her psychedelic jumpsuit and the top her hero costume shoes the rest of her costume was not so acid-resistant. A different less effective chemical had to be used for her fake fur vest and her shoe bottoms otherwise no rescued people could easily hold on to her, nor could she walk, run properly. However Mina had no problem walking around like this, as she was a girl with little to no shame. Of course even she would never be as bold as Midnight Sensei as to run around naked, that was something unique only to her teacher. In any case as soon as the two girls found the room Mina let loose a spray of acid at the dragon hero to force her onto the defensive. Though the acid user did not expect her to defend herself like this she knew her and her partner had an opening the moment the wings opened. 
However, as soon as the dragon hero opened her wings she jumped onto all fours as her sidekick got on her back. Then Nejair let loose the flames forcing them to jump to the side, hiding under a small pile of rubble. However, it was just barely big enough to shield them even after hugging to the point their faces as well as their melons are squished together. With their legs intertwined almost to the point where they are knotted together making it impossible for them to simply stand up after the flames might eventually stop. Unfortunately for them since the flamethrower was not limited for fuel like a normal flamethrower they were trapped by a constant stream of flame. Nina I need to tell you something before we either get burned by her or blown up by Bakugo Toro Hagakure shouted to her friend. What is it? Mina asked also having to yell over the sound of the flamethrower. Before we might die I need to tell you how I don't care about getting a piece of Izuku ass and only wanted to see him dressed as cute as possible. You're the only one I want to take between the sheets with me. Toru admitted to Mina, unsure herself as to why she was confessing all of the sudden. We can talk about how I am also tempted to eat you out and vice versa. But I will win the sports festival to prove to Izuku he is better off with me, and you will have to share my purposely well-toned ass with him. Now let's do what we need to do, kick their asses, and save Izuku. Mina told her back flattered and not caring about gender admittedly also having similar thoughts about Toru. But at the same time she was determined to get that green-haired cutie. To the acid user he was what she always wanted in a guy, cute and albeit really timid, but when it came down to it he would not back down. As far as she could tell he was just as, no more determined than anyone else among the other hero course students. Even going as far as trying to save someone a year ago before he even manifested his quirk and was still quirkless. Despite her silly persona, she was someone who did take one to seriously save people, so as far as she is concerned he is as good as any guy will get for her. Granted this would not stop her from wanting to see him dressed in girls' clothes ever since she saw how perfectly they fit him. In that case let's try our original plan again. Toru said confident that her and Mina combined plan to get past will work if they try it just one more time. In actuality the flamethrower got jammed and Nejire was afraid to move it out of the way of them thinking the situation might get worse. I thought Power Loader Sensei told me that he did a small redesign of that student's original model to make it safer. She thought trying to bear with the heat-resistant gloves she was wearing getting worn out by the constant stream. The truth of the situation was that Mei Hatsum design was more complex than Power Loader had originally thought. As a result, instead of making it safer by limiting the intensity of the flames, it caused an error in it. This error showed itself in the form of the flamethrower's trigger having a chance of getting jammed if used for 5 seconds or longer. Though Neza would end up doing so later behind the scenes to preserve Power Loader dignity. Neza would end up chewing him out for taking a device a student made that was already proven to be safe, and making it unsafe. Mina Ashido threw a blanket of acid overhead behind her while still looking forward at the wall, momentarily putting the flames out. The steam created from it blocked the view of the two opponents allowing Toru Hagakure to run right up to them without getting burned. Once she was right in front of the dragon hero nose and under the flame she unleashed her light attack. Unfortunately for the dragon hero the smell of the burning metal right above her head tampered with her sense of smell otherwise she would have noticed the student in front of her. Her hair would have also burned if they did not spray it with flame retardant like they did earlier before they started. As such her only issue now was that she was blinded and in her moment of shock got on her hind legs like a bucking horse. This caused Nejire to fall off her back and fall onto a blinded Izuku knocking him out via a but in his face that she would later apologize for. But secretly enjoy the feeling of that moment. Fortunately for Nejire landing hard on the ground and jammed the trigger stopping the flames. Momentarily anyways. This was when Mina ran into the dragon hero to cover her eyes in a thick layer of acid that was as weak as she could make it. Once the dragon hero eyes were covered both her and Toru ran to their second obstacle only to get their heads smashed together by two large fists knocking them out. Itsuka Kendo then grabbed Izuku Midoriya and carried her princess out of there starting the timer as soon as she stepped out of the maze. However that was also when Cementa shifted the maze for the first time, giving her an immediate challenge. Part 2. Third Person POV Itsuka Kendo had found the room when before she could ever do anything she was suddenly knocked out by two girls crashing into her. She woke up what she assumed was a few minutes later to hear screaming and absurdly perverse confessions. However she was happy to see two of her potential competitors for Izuku pinned down by the flamethrower. Unfortunately it looked like the two girls were about to deal with the flamethrower, which meant she had to hurry and get herself ready to make her move. With Herculean determination, and a smidge amount of help from her quirk she shoved the pair on top of her off, getting into a sprinting position. When the girls blinded the dragon hero and took out the flamethrower Itsuka ran after them taking them out from behind. Grabbing her Izuku she got out of the room to hear a loud blow horn go off, as well as hear present Mike give an announcement and see the maze shift before her very eyes. And with that folks the 30 minute timer begins, along with young Kendo's score. Present Mike shouted getting the audience excited for the real start of the event. Vlad who was watching from the class 1B stands was not too pleased to see Kendo use such a dirty strategy despite the fact it was Aizawa students she did it to. Aizawa up in the announcer's booth instead felt the opposite despite his students being the victims and was proud of Itsuka Kendo. As an underground hero he believed in anything goes so long as it is legal, ignoring public opinion. Vlad on the other hand was the opposite also in that regard. 
he was constantly striving to maintain and improve a good public image as BLD Quirk users including himself were always discriminated against. Nezu on the other hand was impressed that the girl despite refusing to try to form a team understood her limits and formulated a plan around those limits. Though I gotta save lad, based off what I just saw I would say Eraser would be better suited to teaching her if that is how she fight. Present Mike said knowing his friend was probably already considering swapping her into his class. That being said, he would gladly help his friend in the feud between the two of them, so long as he could assist where he could in a safe way for him. Back to Itsuka in the maze, the moment she stepped foot out of the room carrying Izuku the maze changed to bring her face to face with her first opponent. Not hesitating she dashed forward and slid under the bulky frame of Rikido Sato, making sure to enlarge her fist after getting directly under his balls, pretty much incapacitating him for the next few minutes as he was also flipped over. And in this contest every passing second mattered, especially for someone like her who was on no team to speak of. Unfortunately for her he was not alone like her, at the 15 second mark after she turned the corner and was about to turn the next she was tackled. Mizo Shoji who tackled her was separated from his partner by the shifting walls used his quirk before to find both Rikido and Itsuka as well. Henceforth why he was able to ambush her and avenge his teammate, after quickly glancing to see her struggle to get back up he ran to his partner. Finding his teammate in the ground clutching his crotch he tried to help him up, but then... He received a pink foot to the face. At just barely the 19 seconds and 82 nanosecond mark he was attacked by a frustrated and confused Mina. This resulted in him joining his teammate on the ground as Mina and someone else who he did not see run onto of him. Toru who was not completely knocked out due to Itsuka Kendo slightly missing her mark due to her invisibility. As such she got Mina out of the way of the dragon hero before their eyesight recovered. Thankfully the tremors from the maze shifting woke up Mina. What happened? Mina shouted looking around as they were back into the hallway. Itsuka Kendo from 1B knocked us out and ran off with Izuku, Toru said as the two girls began running. This was when they found Shoji leaning over their classmate Sato. Mina immediately ran and kicked him in the face as Toru grabbed Izuku 1 second and 96 nanoseconds after preventing him from hitting the ground. The teachers judging all agreed that no team so far had used an attack that would have put him in any danger significant enough to justify taking points away. Midnight on the other hand was screaming her lungs out for the pink girl who was being so daring by practically walking around in her underwear. Though it was technically a swimsuit, since it served to function in place of underwear for her hero costume Midnight considered it underwear. Itsuka Kendo was not cheering for her on the other hand as the two girls stepped on her as she was almost on her knees after the previous tackle she took from the multi-limbed human tank. The whole way they turned down was apparently a long one as at a fast jogging pace they moved it to make distance from the others behind without exhausting themselves lasted for approximately 20 seconds. Turning the corner they ran into a pair of boys from their rival class and a boy with purple hair they did not recognize crossed their path. Though they felt it was odd how the other two looked at them in a bored empty gaze while the other was blushing slightly and seemed shocked. In any case they did not hesitate to take advantage as Mina used her acid, on lowest acidity due to her partner, to add some extra speed to her roundhouse kick. And in these tight settings this allowed her to take out the two space cases before transitioning into a right hook taking down the purple haired kid. Granted he tried to block her by crossing his arms, but she coated her fist in a little acid allowing it to slide through the gap between his arms and force them open. The two turned the corner of this shorter hallway only to come across Bakugo who immediately noticed them. Die. He yelled his signature word before launching an explosion at them. Mina and Tora fortunately ducked and slid past him on Mina acid trail but the wall he blasted instead was smoldering rubble. The three teachers in the booth began discussing this action, but quickly came to a consensus on the matter. Katsuki Bekugo is the first to not only lose points but the maximum as well. Present Mike said as his score on the scoreboard showed a negative 15. Aizawa despite being his teacher was an impartial judge who agreed he deserved to lose the maximum points for his attack. Nezu was simply glad Aizawa was still the stoic and professional teacher he always had been despite this being his own student they were judging. Present Mike on the other hand, as much as he wanted to give him a pass he folded to the other two as he could not justify this unnecessarily powerful attack. Especially since the teen had shouted die before attacking them, clearly ignoring the quote-unquote hostage they were carrying. Mitsuki Bekugo who was in the stands with her husband watching was screaming full rage at them deducting points. While she was more focused on how he proved himself stronger than the two cowards who ran away her husband was fortunately a voice of reason. He understood what their son did wrong and was holding her back from jumping over the railing into the ring to slap the two teachers down there. Katsuki Bakugo was not someone to let something go and chased after them using his explosions and her acid to catch up. Nina threw Toru in front of her and tried to stop Bakugo by spraying some slightly stronger acid at him to cause him some minor pain. Unfortunately for her Bakugo let out another explosion in front of him aimed at her, jumping to make sure her acid trail did not slide him back. His explosion mixing with her stronger acid and the concrete resulted in a bigger explosion than intended catching all involved off guard. This resulted in all four of them being thrown into the air to come crashing down, as well as Izuku waking up in a panic as the dress he was wearing was slightly burned. 
the three judges only took away 10 points due to the fact that even Bakugo was surprised by the power of the last explosion. When Toru had let go of Izuku that had held onto him for a total of 48 seconds and 72 nanoseconds, Izuku deciding not to wait for Bakugo to try and attack him again began running in a random direction away from the three classmates of his. The last thing that I remember was Hato sent by falling on me after Toru blinded us with her attack. Izuku thought to himself trying to figure how he suddenly got to here. Meanwhile in the announcer booth two of the three were unsure of what to do. So Nezu, is this against the rules? Present Mike asked as he was unsure of what to do. While technically we never said Izuku could run around on his own, so therefore the timer will still continue to chip away while he runs from Bekugo. Nezu said Kam is always snickering to himself at the end. Aizawa on the other hand was glad that Midoriya was allowed to fight off the people trying to drag him around everywhere. Though I wonder how long he will be able to outrun all the crazy individuals trapped in the maze with him. Aizawa thought to himself pondering his most problematic student fate. Izuku used one for all at 3% power to give his run a boost he needed to make some quick distance between him and Bekugo. While running he noticed the floor ahead looked like it was rippling like a water surface, so he decided to jump from wall to wall instead. This caused the student from class B to look up in confusion and disappointment that their plan to capture him failed so easily. That is until Izuku stepped on their face as he slipped of the wall as he was not used to doing this kind of thing. Yet, though for those like Recovery Girl or All Might, they recognized the way he was moving to be the same way Grand Torino moved with his quirk. Inko however was just as proud as she remembered him watching a news video a few times when he was younger of his great-grandfather taking down villains, even if she never told him it was his great-grandfather. However as he got to an intersection he saw that the other three ways had someone who spotted him and were now running towards him. On his left was his classmate Ciro, who caught his arm with tape holding onto it tightly. To his right was Monoma from Class B using a vine quirk to grab a hold of his other arm to try and also pull him in his direction. Finally on his front was his classmate Ida speeding towards him rushing to grab him even if it meant slamming into him. Being caught in this tug of war was already starting to hurt his arm, so he really did not want to see what would happen if Ida ran into him now like this. Naturally all three boys lost 10 points each for clearly ignoring the pain they were putting him in. In his panic he used a five perfect finger flick to the feet of the boys on his left and right causing them to trip and stumble forward which is when he pulled them. Jumping back as he did so he laid on his stomach as the two boys fell in front of Ida causing all to be sent flying to the boy behind who was about to grab him. Realizing he was about to get grabbed from behind before, he decided his best bet would be to find a way to hide for as long as possible. Or else at this rate everyone was liable to tear him apart, then as he tried to run again he collapsed at the crossroads. He realized his ankle was sprained, possibly even broken and he could not run anymore, as he tried to limp away the two hardening quirk users found him. As Kirishima picked him up and a princess hold the time began for them as Izuku had ended up shaving off 63 seconds and 27 nanoseconds off the clock. Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu began running with Izuku wrapping his arms around his classmate neck trying his hardest to hold on through the pain. After a few seconds Kirishima noticed that he was looking in pain so he had him and Tetsu Tetsu stop at the end of the hallway. After checking the corners Kirishima handed Izuku to Tetsu Tetsu who knelt so Izuku could lay his leg down on the ground. Give me a second to do this real quick bro then, we will be on the move again. Hiroshima said to his partner, No problem. We may not be the best at first aid, but we can at least try to make it easier for him. Tetsu Tetsu said giving his partner and all things manly a toothy grin. Hiroshima used his hardening quirk on his arm focusing it so he could make it sharp enough for his next task. After seeing Midoriya face off against Bakugo on the second day he realized not just Midoriya needed to learn how to control his quirk better. Or rather if he wanted to keep with him after Midoriya did learn how to control he would need to also bring his quirk to its best potential, and to do that he needed to refine his control over it. Using his sharpened arm he cut a thick slice of concrete out of the wall with a punch. Sorry I don't really know how to whittle this down Midoriya, Hiroshima said comparing the piece of concrete to his ankle. Give me your arm. Izuku asked him quietly as he was embarrassed that Kirishima was doing this for him. Luckily he kept in mind the emergency first aid recovery girl taught him for a situation like this combined with his years of self-treated experience. Hiroshima decided to let the expert do it seeing as Midoriya had the most first aid knowledge out of everyone on the class. Though he still wondered why they only ever got an award chuckle followed by silence whenever anyone asked him why he was so good at it. Hiroshima noticed how Izuku used his sharpened arm to whittle it down to just the right size and thickness needed as Midoriya also changed that as well. Hey Midoriya it is really amazing that you know how to do this. He said as Tetsu Tetsu nodded with him when Midoriya turned to him as well. Aye aye it is nothing special, compared to Recovery Girl anyway. Izuku trailed off unsure of how to take their compliments. Though he did hope that Recovery Girl who was watching this was satisfied with his work that she had taught him. Later this young hero would find out how pleased she was with his skills at this, she would even say she was proud at his abilities he displayed. After a minute or so at this point of him meeting up with Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu he was ready for them to move out again. His ankle that he could say was definitely fractured after his closer examination was taken care of for the time being. 
Using the whittled down stone and a piece of Tetsutetsu shirt sleeve he ripped it for the green haired boy to use, his splint was done. Tetsutetsu had passed Izuku back to Kirishima before they ran though as the iron boy had thought that he had more of a right to do so. Back with the judges they were rather impressed with what they were seeing down there in the maze. And with that folks the duo of hardening quirk users just scored 15 points. Present Mike said confusing the audience. I can tell many are confused. This was never told as to be a secret test but for those who stop to treat Midori injures will receive bonus points. Nezu said with a cheery tone as usual enjoying that someone actually passed his test. As Hiro must also take care to inspect the victim's injuries otherwise they may make them worse by moving them, possibly even killing the ones they are supposed to save. Aizawa continued in his monotone voice spelling it out for the more dense heroes or civilians watching. Just like Nezu both him and present Mike were glad someone noticed, as such they gave them 15 instead of 10 since they were the first. Since Midoriya was doing the important part they were going to not give full points, but after considering the behavior of the previous three. They decided to reward the two usual hot BL dead boys for being more level-headed than what usually their more level-headed classmates. As the three turned a corner they ran into Katsuki Bakugo who was upset that Midoriya had tried to run away from him to make him lose, immediately shooting off two explosions so they could not dodge by duck under the top one. Hiroshima who used his quirk on only his back to focus it again turned around jumping back towards the explosion shielding Midoriya. Tetsu Tetsu picking up quickly on his partner's plan grabbed his shoulders activating their hardening quirk smashing Bakugo into the wall using Kirishima. Bakugo lost another 15 points due to this attack once again showing no concern for the hostage in the attack's line of fire. However that was when the maze shifted once again as 5 minutes it had passed. This however caused the wall to separate the two users. Hiroshima who was picked up by the wall quickly passed Izuku to Tetsu Tetsu as Midoriya had lost his grip on him causing a 94 nanosecond delay in points. You okay bro? Tetsu Tetsu shouted towards the top of the wall hoping for a response. Yeah I'm okay just go around and meet back up. Hiroshima said indeed responding to his partner voice already hurrying to catch back up. With that response he hurried around a corner not noticing the shadows of the individuals. Look it was too late for him as he ran through before Izuku could finish warning him. Waiting for him was Nido Monoma and Kosai Tsuburaba with air discs smashing them into one side of his head each knocking him out. With of course Monoma grabbing Izuku from his classmate damaging Izuku's splint in the process. With that Tetsu Tetsu added another 7 seconds and 26 nanoseconds to his team's score. Using Tsuburaba quirk both boys whenever coming across a fellow contestants blocked off that hallway entrance with a layer of air. Before running however, sometimes Monoma would copy their quirk and use it to deflect more attacks or simply store them if he did not need to use them. Earlier they got separated but now that they were back together all they had to do was steer clear of Todoroki and Bakugo from class 1A. When they stopped to catch their breath as Tsuburaba had overused his quirk and Monoma was dealing with a struggling Izuku the whole time. Will you stop it? I will end up dropping you if you keep struggling. Monoma shouted, his anger aggravated further by the fact that the one student and one he could tolerate being around was being rude to him. It also did not help that they slapped him earlier for him accidentally grabbing their butt when they almost slipped out of his grip earlier. You're the one that damaged my splint on my fractured ankle causing me more pain you nutcase. Izuku shouted annoyed that these two ruined his, Kirishima, and the 1B student's work from earlier. He was currently finding it hard to believe that the metal version of his classmate Kirishima was in the same class as this blonde jerk. Well folks, I do not intend to play favorites but I definitely would not want those two rescue me anytime soon if I was injured. Present Mike said laughing as his friend glowered at the two boys with Midoriya. Aizawa was upset cause even him despite his less than polite way of doing things, knows better than to aggravate a civilian's injury like that while carrying them to safety. Nezu was enjoying this amusing argument unfold in front of him while taking note to add the two hardening quirk users to his list of possible mission members. Also the rodent principal made a mental note to put together a week of just rescue training down the line to teach things for situations like this. All Might who was watching this unfold felt bad that his pupil could not even run away from anyone right now with his ankle the way it is. Recovery Girl was worried about whether or not she could fully heal it in time for the third round, especially if things kept getting more rough. Gran Torino who stopped to catch his breath earlier after getting turned around was proud to see Izuku using his fighting style. At the same time he was making a mental note to teach the boy proper footwork so he would not slip off the wall again. And Ko on the other hand was on the edge of her seat worried over how barbarically those two were treating him despite the goal being to protect him. Vlad King on the other hand was pinching the bridge of his nose in exasperation at how bad present Mike commentary is making his teaching skills look right now. Back at the maze while the supposed hero was arguing with the rescued princess but Hugo finally find his way around back to Izuku. Of course only after overhearing from a short distance away the argument he was having with whoever had him at the time. There you are Deku. Bakugo shouted firing off an armor piercing shot or AP shot for short at the two 1B students with Izuku. This sent Izuku flying into the wall. Fortunately for the green haired hero in training he used his quirk in time. Once again using a 5% boosted attack. In this case a palm strike on the wall to vault himself over the wall safely and away from Bakugo. 
back Hugo losing at 12 points as he used a more carefully aimed explosion compared to earlier in the match, but clearly ignoring the fact he heard before that Izuku was injured. Monoma and Tsuburaba on the other hand got a total of 167 seconds and 37 nanoseconds. I got you, Kanoko Komori said as she caught Izuku on the other side of the wall with her two teammates with her. Kanoko, just like the others would have, took advantage of the situation give his ass a quick squeeze before shifting him to a proper princess hold. Well, as proper as she could given the height difference between the two of them. Izuku managing to scrape of another 8 seconds and 11 nanoseconds off the clock due to how long it took his vaulting trick to make him fall into Kanoko arms. Part 3. Third Person POV As impressive as that wall vault was, all it did was get him away from Explosion Manic and into the arms of another one, or rather three of them. Present Mike exclaimed as Izuku was caught by Kanoko Komori. The crowd excited to see these three back in the spotlight, but also worried for Izuku's safety as well after how the last two groups treated him. As for those who save him it is what I like to call the trinity of mass destruction. Present Mike said not making the crowd feel any better before he gave each their own intro. First is the leader, a one-women armory Momo Yeirazu. A lady, if you can call her that, Kinnan will not hesitate to blow you up so I suggest you stay out of her way. The warning at the end being for the other less combat-capable students. Her second in command Yui Kodai who can literally crush you with a pebble thanks to her quirk. He said already imaging her turning a pebble into a boulder in the maze. Finally we have the third member, Kanoko Komori who I am pretty sure has violated the Geneva Convention has already sent over a hundred students to the hospital. This they actually had to check for legal matters, even so they let her participate regardless of whether they would need to end up disqualifying her or not. I got you. Kinoko Komori declared as her long-awaited princess fell into her arms for her team to finally score some points. Knowing Bakugo was just over that wall they all ran back tracking remembering how there was six people on their heels before the maze shift. However with the maze shift many of them had to most likely go around as such they hoped to find less enemies to fight. Unfortunately for them Bakugo had a different strategy in mind, this was blasting his way through the walls, as well as the fellow competitors on the other side of said walls who were unlucky enough to be there when he was. Momo team ran into Mashiro Ajiro, Tagaru Kamakiri, and Haru Rin who despite being from different classes agreed to work together as they all specialized in close combat. With Tagaru Kamakiri having a small amount of skill in ranged combat, but Haru Rin however was the most knowledgeable of the three, as such he knew how to deal with Momo best. Momo creating four pistols passing two to Yui with rubber bullets in the chamber already fired off their six shots per gun. Rin however launched his scales that just barely absorbed the force of the bullets, both falling to the ground. Ajiro using this brief moment did what his teammate told him to do earlier and launched their other teammate Kamakiri at them with his tail. His blades ready to strike, but never connected as Yui unloaded her empty cartridges touching the as she launched them at him. Not only blocking him but trapping his two teammates with him underneath them as the three girls ran over them with Izuku in tow. Unfortunately for them just as the three boys got the slabs of metal off of them they were blown up by Bakugo who proceeded through the wall beside them. Oh, that has got a sting. First Momo and Kodai beating them down then Bakugo finishes off what little pride they had left. Present Mike said grinning as he just managed to hold back his laughter. As much as I want to lecture him about this, I can't really blame Midoriya in this case as cannot even walk away from them right now. Aizawa thought just wanting the child suffering to end already. Nezu who was seeing this was enjoying the unrestrained chaos happening before his eyes today, despite his pity for Midoriya. Though he had to admit, not even he thought young Bakugo could simply blast his way through Cementos walls like he was doing. If it was undecided before it is definitely decided now, when this sports festival is over I am removing those grenade gauntlets from his costume. Nezu thought as he poured himself a new cup of tea. Recovery girl who was watching this simply sighed as she knew this meant even more work for her now with these three new victims of his. Back at the maze they had just turned a corner when suddenly Bakugo appears before them as an explosion broke a hole in the wall. Slowly he was walking out of the hole, huffing from all his running around at explosion making noticing them with Izuku. For some reason the sight of them treating his childhood friend as a helpless princess was infuriating him, but he could not figure out why. Was he sure of anything right now? Yes, yes he was. He was sure that right now he need to blow them the FCK up like the third-rate bitches they were and grab the green-haired boy from as soon as possible. Not hesitating he let loose a AP shot at their feet knocking them off balance causing Momo to drop the stun gun she made when she saw him. Then he rushed at them ready to use a close-range explosion to finish the three off when a blowhorn went off and the maze shifted. This caused Izuku and Kanoko to disappear behind a wall and another to appear between him and his other two targets. Due to Izuku being in the range of both attacks the judges decided that his first lost him only 7 points as he aimed at the ground. Despite Izuku not being in direct harm's way, if Bakugo was off by a little bit he might have hit Izuku if it went past the first two before hitting the ground. While the second lost him another 15 as it would have definitely caught Izuku in the crossfire if not for the wall appearing. They argued about making it 12 but decided since it devalued his first carefully aimed attack they made it the maximum instead. 
Thanks to the May shift, Kanoko barely managed to get her team 116 seconds and 32 nanoseconds. However, she now found herself faced off against a total of five opponents covering all sides except her back due to the wall. To her left was Mizo Shoji and his partner Rikido Sato with their hulking frames running towards her. Then to her right was Fumikage Takoyami with Dark Shadow out, as he ran to her as well with Dark Shadow only a few seconds away from reaching her. Then to her front was Denki Kaminari and Minor Amaita with the shorter boy making creepy gripping motions in his hands making her unsure if her or Izuku was his target. Just as Dark Shadow was about to reach her vines erupted from the ground cocooning them and pulling them away from everyone via underground. When she was pulled out from the other side she was face to face with her classmate giving her a stern look with their arms held out. Knowing what her classmate was capable of she handed over Izuku deciding it was better to not get herself needlessly beaten. This resulted in her team getting another 31 seconds and 22 nanoseconds. Also as a side bonus for the audience watching the three groups got shocked, pummeled, and then stuck together in a pile of pain with a little bit of humiliation on top. Ouch that definitely hurt a few of them where the sun does not shine, if their faces are anything to go by. Present Mike said Isato and Shoji looked like they were ready to drop if they were still standing. The duo who smashed skulls first into their crotches was Kaminari and Minda, with the shorter one being at the bottom of the entire pile. Well at least those two at the bottom got what they deserved for not taking this seriously Aizawa thought momentarily before realizing Recovery Girl knows what they did. For their sakes they better hope Recovery Girl is on a forgiving mood. He said getting an internal wince from Midnight who participated in the nurse's last mercy. Nezu also expecting this to be nothing compared to the old woman Wrath was pondering when Todoroki would finally cross paths with the two. Back at the maze Ibarra Shizaki was currently using her vine to crawl forward while holding Izuku close to her chest. After getting a short distance from her classmate and the others back there she stopped to use her vines to help fix Izuku's splint. My apologies about that but I needed to make some distance before I could properly tend to it. She said taking his nod and smile as a good sign she did it right. And with that folks the pious Shizaki earns herself 13 and a half points. She would have earned more if a certain someone was not being so stingy with the points. Present Mike announced. Ibarra Shizaki parents who were watching this in the stands were quite happy to see their daughter tending to Izuku injuries. What are you talking about Mike? Me and Nezu gave her 5 points, you were the one that gave her 3 and a half points. Aizawa said not letting his friend add more to Vlad unreasonable ire towards him. Present Mike chuckled nervously but fortunately for him Shoto Todoroki decided to make a big move. Ibarra Shizaki had blocked off a section of the maze with her vines, trying not to move Izuku as much as possible. Unfortunately for her Todoroki decided to tear through her vines with frozen spikes while making a layer of ice on the ground to keep them in place. He knew she had Izuku as he ran into Kanoko Komori earlier and froze her demanding information. And with that he just lost himself 15 points. Present Mike said as all three judges agreed on deducting maximum points. Present Mike thought the student was using excessive force to say the least with this last attack. Especially since Midori got stabbed about 2 centimeters deep by one of the ice spikes, with Ibarra getting stabbed through all four limbs. Aizawa was infuriated at what Endeavor had been teaching his son, if his way of fighting was anything to go by. Nezu on the other hand just shook his head as disappointment at how much his student was like his father, in one of the worst ways possible at that. As Todoroki made his way through the torn up vines and spikes of ice he made, he saw Ibarra Shuzaki wrapping her whole body around Izuku. As soon as the temperature dropped she focused on using her body to shield him from the cold. When the cold air hit it was affecting her rate to grow more vines. She used what little she could produce to pull the broken off icicle tip out of his leg before using it to make a truncate to stop the bleeding. And with it she just got herself another 10 points present Mike said as the other two agreed with him that despite how minor the first aid was, her shielding him deserved the points they gave her. Hand him over, Todoroki said holding his hand out as he got closer to her and his target. She quietly stared back holding Izuku closer, not wanting to hand him over to this unnecessarily violent boy. I don't have time for you behaving like a child he said already behind everyone else after barely making it through the first event like he did. Pass princess here. They shouted as she flew towards them from behind Todoroki. Ibarra wanting to get Izuku to safety head butted Todoroki knocking him back before holding Izuku up in the air. They seeing the chance grabbed Izuku from her after knocking Todoroki over as she flew in. This gave Ibarra 112 seconds and 62 nanoseconds before handing him off to Mei. Flying through the maze just above arm's reach of most of the contestants, slowing down when she saw Izuku wince. TT thank you. Izuku said still cold from when Todoroki attacked him and Ibarra earlier. No need princess, I hope Vine Lady will be okay though. Mei said seeing how she struggled to lift him earlier for her to grab him. What about you though? You got a broken ankle and got stabbed just like her. She said not being an expert but still knowing that had to have been painful with how everyone was probably treating him. It is fractured not broken, and the stab wound is not that deep, she got it a lot worse than me since she was shielding me. He responded silently thanking her silently still. Behind him and May they could see two trails trying to follow them, one was of ice cold mist, the other of grayish smoke brimming with heat along with the scent of caramel. Unfortunately for May they were catching up, meaning she would lose the spotlight soon. 
Then she remembered what her grandfather once told her when she asked him what he did when he was stuck on an investigation when he was still a detective. Whenever I got stuck or hit a wall, all I had to do was go back to the beginning to find that one thing I missed. Is what he always said. I have not one but two people who I missed at the beginning. May exclaimed as she changed direction suddenly, causing Izuku to yelp in surprise. She also increased the power output of her jetpack just enough so as to cause it to leave a barely noticeable smoke trail. The top two students who saw what they did not realize she did it on purpose to lead them where she wanted. Keeping track of the time since this event began she knew another May shift was about to happen and the two following her was on pace. As she reached the room she saw Kendo and dropped Izuku to her calling out catch, trying to not make too much noise. This got May 120 seconds and 32 nanoseconds. The drop taking 2 seconds and 54 nanoseconds before Kendo caught him running as far away from her as possible. Neither of the two chasers realizing May already let go of Izuku continued to pursue her with Todoroki ahead of Bakugo. As a result, when Bakugo went over his trail less than a few seconds behind the sudden shift in temperature from cold to hot, combined with Bakugo nitroglycerin-like sweat resulted in a large explosion. This explosion not only wiped out all the walls surrounding them clearing a path to the May Center, it also launched the two into the room just as the May shifted, repaired itself again. This added another 34 seconds and 30 nanoseconds to Kendo record as she continued running with Izuku. And just like that folks we have officially reached the halfway point of the event with only 15 minutes left. Present Mike yelled getting the audience to shout with him. Do you have to be so loud Mike? Aizawa asked his friend embarrassed that a coffee-obsessed support course student outsmarted his second and third most powerful students. Nezu on the other hand was always happy to see someone getting knocked off their pedestal. Especially if it was a student who was in need of an ego check in order to not become the next endeavor. Speaking of which he got a message on his phone and was shocked by what the good detective and his lie detector quirk confirmed for him. Looks like I will need to have a talk with that boy after school tomorrow. Nezu thought to himself hoping that this will be not as messy as it seemed like it was going to be. As the two boys recovered they got up to see that the exit out of the room was behind the dragon hero and her assistant. So boys, who wants to find out first how strong my tail muscles are? Mukyu asked them using her tail to crush a sizable piece of maize debris to dust before their eyes. Part 4. Third Person POV While the two boys had to fight the dragon hero, the maze escalating into further chaos with the notification everyone had just received. Endeavor who saw his son stumble onto his ass in front of his enemy like that was. Upset to say the least. First you barely make it into the second round, and now you show weakness in front of a pro hero you should already be able to surpass. Endeavor thought to himself. Not only did he not consider anyone among the students a worthy opponent except the kid with the explosion quirk, but he also considered the dragon hero and the third year student below his son as well. You better beat her quirk and get enough points to make it into the final round boy. He grumbled to himself deciding to take his eyes off this for the next few minutes to calm himself down by going for a walk. Meanwhile a grandfather of a certain pink haired who was in a local cop bar watching the sports festival ended up spitting out his drink. That is not what I meant for you to use my advice for. He shouted getting a laugh from the others around him. Both the younger cops who were still in service and the other retired cops there all knew his daughter had what they considered a hilarious record. Despite the fact she has an arrest record, it was mostly of her stealing scrap metal from the originally trash-filled beach. Which ironically enough, it was dismissed as she was technically doing a public service by cleaning the beach for free. Though they felt bad for her grandfather sometimes, it was always hilarious to mess with the rookies by having them interrogate her. I pray for that boy if she has taken a liking to him. Her gramps thought to himself as the others were making jokes about her kidnapping her future husband. Kendo who was running with Izuku until a bright light with a loud popping sound went off blinding her only momentarily. This however was enough for another group to attack her while grabbing Izuku hitting her on the head knocking her out. Her final points added to her score was 10 seconds and 68 nanoseconds which hopefully will be enough for her to go through to the final round. Before Kendo was ambushed by the group of three girls, two of them were retrieving their third comrade. When Yeyurazu and Kodai found their friend frozen like a human popsicle the two girls were infuriated by the undignified sight of their friend. They did this by using the trackers they all put on before the second round began. That being said Yeyurazu was genuinely surprised at how she felt genuine concern for these two girls who were in the rival class to hers. I know that this is not a time to be holding back, but come on Todoroki you did not need to go this far to take her down with your power level difference. Yeyurazu thought to herself as she produced four handheld heaters to melt the ice. After a while they eventually got her free and made their way to Izuku as Momo managed to slip a tracker underneath his skirt earlier. After the maze shifted they spotted Kendo with Izuku and she created a flash grenade to blind both of them. Moving in Yeyurazu passed them staffs to conserve her lipid reserves, as she went up to and grabbed Izuku from Kendo who was still stumbling confused. Yui brought her staff down on her class representative knocking them out cold. After dodging a few attacks they were all knocked down from a tackle from Tenya Ida who swooped up Izuku in the process. This added 32 seconds and 46 nanoseconds to the score for her group of three. He managed to run for a solid 15 seconds and 12 nanoseconds before sliding on acid, 
falling into a kick to the jaw before going to crash into the wall that was supposed to be where he would have turned. However, his engines ignited the trail of her acid that had mixed with the cement resulting in a small explosive boost. This caused him to crash through the wall and pass out upon impact. If he had his armor, he would have been conscious still. Well, people, if it was ever debated, we now know the answer. A well-pedicured foot is most definitely stronger than a chiseled jaw. Present Mike said with many of the female spectators wondering where she got hers done. Aizawa, who was watching this, hoped that despite the slap to the face Mike just gave him, his student would learn from this. That being said, despite her good footwork, Ashido could use a bit of more practice with her kicking stance. Aizawa thought to himself, already planning to have her and Ida train together after they returned from their internships. Nezu, however, was finding it amusing how his greatest strength was also the biggest weakness when facing her quirk. Managing to run quickly, but slower than Ida so they can take turns still unlike Ida who due to the force of his quirk was unable to. After a few tight turns they made their way to a pair of flying horns smacking them right in the foreheads. With the taking of Izuku, the two girls got 40 seconds and 32 nanoseconds added to their score before getting up to begin chasing them. Unfortunately for Yeirazu, Kodai, and Kanoko, Mina acid damaged their tracker making them lose track of Izuku completely. And with that the duo of Ghost and Horse galloped silently into the lead by running over the hero course's fashion pair. Present Mike said being fair and taking a jab at them now. Fashion, since when is being naked considered fashion? Aizawa said in his usual deadpan tone. He understood how Ashido with her absurd clothing choice fit, but Hagakure was naked plain and simple. I consider nudity very stylish thank you very much. Midnight yelled at Aizawa cracking her whip scaring Cementos. Both him, and most if not all of those watching this all thought the same thing. Of course you of all people would say that. They thought with many mothers and fathers covering their children eyes. On the other hand was laughing her ass off right now at her friend usual bold opinion as well as the parents reaction. I swear Nezu making her UAPR representative was the best joke that Mouse has ever made. Thought trying to figure out how to breathe again. With Ryaiko holding Izuku in a princess hold, she was sitting on her partner's back as they ran on all fours through the maze. Due to the horse aspect of her quirk she was able to run on all fours as naturally as when she walks or runs on two legs. In fact her speed was even faster on all fours than on two legs. Granted people usually made fun of her for it so she only told Ryaiko and her teacher so far. As such no one had any idea about her secret weapon. Well except for four people in UA, though only three knew for sure. Two of them who knew for sure were her partner and teacher, the one who did not know for sure was Nezu as he had yet to ride on her back. Izuku was the other one who speculated but unlike the principal can now say for sure his assessment of her quirk was right. Turning down corridor after corridor they came across many people, with Pony using her four horns to fly by standing on them. Ryaiko used her quirk to make Izuku float while still holding him, that way Pony only had to hold up the weight of the two of them. Though after getting past people they switched back to feet on the ground in order to not overtax Ryaiko. Eventually they came across the hardening duo, both of them shoulder to shoulder ready to grab them. However for the two boys Pony launched two horns, one to hold down one foot each. Then used her last two as stepping stools going hands first, pulling herself forward as he hands went behind her. Her feet once landed kicked off as she stretched her arms forward. The two boys covered their heads with their arms activating their quirks. However her legs were more than strong enough to push past the defense and send them face forward into the ground. You would think her horns would have held them in place, but she returned them to herself as soon as she stepped on them. As such there was nothing to hold them back, fortunately their hardening quirk stopped their ankles from breaking on them. The horn went off and the maze shifted adding 201 seconds and 2 nanoseconds to their score. When the maze shifted, Gyro who predicted the maze shift based off the tremors had an attack prepared for them with her partner. Gyro attacked the ground under them to throw Pony off balance, while Achako who used her quirk on herself immediately after jumped towards them. Achako then returned her gravity to normal kicking Ryaiko in the face as she grabbed Izuku, but not before removing gravity on Pony. With her floating, and having to hold onto a dent in the wall to not float away, Hachako and Gyro ran with Hachako releasing gravity a minute later. The pair who were just defeated got another 3 seconds and 82 nanoseconds. Looks like their attack from before against the dragon worked on the horse horse and ghost instead. Present Mike said doing a replay of the moment the kick landed on Ryaiko face. Now go back, heck, then forward, gotta give it to your rock as she did not skip out on leg day with a kick that strong. He said showing the rippling of her cheek skin where your rocket connected. This earned him a BLD spear launched at the announcer booth landing an eighth of an inch away from his face. I know you are trying to make this more interesting for the people watching. But try to do it without giving Vlad a reason to practice his spear throwing technique on you, okay. Aizawa said as his friend just gulped and gave out a very quiet yes. Well quiet by his standards, by a normal person's standard he was talking at a normal volume. Nezu simply laughed his tiny little head off as present Mike got what his big mouth earned him. Vlad on the other hand was getting ready to launch another one if he ever did that again to one of his students. With Gyro using her quirk repeatedly, they kept taking turns avoiding people till they suddenly got attacked. From above, being so focused on using her hearing, Gyro did notice the shadow above them till Achako warned her. 
However, it was too late as Suyu delivered a drop kick to Gyro Chest, knocking the wind out of her, nearly knocking her out as well. Before Achako could react, however, a pair of floating hands pulled her top overhead. They then grabbed Izuku while Achako was busy fixing her shirt before too many people saw her sports bra she was wearing. Due to losing Izuku, they got 94 seconds and 27 nanoseconds added to their score as a result. Setsuna was flying through the air using her quirk while holding Izuku, while Tsuyu jumped from wall to wall alongside her. Anyone who crossed their path got used as a kickboard by Tsuyu as she attacked them, before catching back up to her partner. However, not all good things lasted forever, in fact as they were just about to reach 200 seconds when they were attacked. First it was a flash of light that blinded them, causing Tsuyu to bump into her partner and fall onto the ground. Then Izuku was grabbed from them before they landed. The substance they landed in was a thick liquid that made it hard for them to move let alone stand. This resulted in a total of 188 seconds and 84 nanoseconds added to their score essentially securing their spot. Now that the pair got their target they made their getaway with moments later the horn going off for the final time. Here it is folks, the final may shift in the final 5 minutes of this practically gladiatorial princess rescuing. Present Mike said as the maze shifted for possibly the last time anyone would ever see. Things are going to get even crazier now, assuming anyone has the strength left to continue fighting. Aizawa thought to himself seeing how most teams or individuals were either too exhausted or too injured to even move. Nezu and Midnight who saw what was about to come the way of those two girls winced for the pain they were about to endure. Gyro and Achako who were quick to recover used Gyro earphone jack as a tripwire while Achako made them float. She also grabbed Izuku before they let go of him. This got Mina and Toru their last 30 seconds and 18 nanoseconds they will get for the rest of the event. With their chance to catch up to the others in sight they ran, once again using gyro quirk to avoid people. This was able to stall for the time they needed, however Pony was reminded by Ryaiko about gyro hearing quirk they found out about last time they fought. As such she flew rather than ran through the maze, and the two caught the pair off guard. Once in the horse girl sights, their opponent hit the ground and charged full force. With of course Ryaiko helping to speed up her still floating horns used them to snatch Izuku away from Machako. The two wanted girls got literally run over by their competitor as Pony had too much momentum to stop herself until she hit them. This meeting brought an end to the girls' catch-up plan getting them 75 seconds and 73 nanoseconds added to their final score. The silent stead as they were just a moment ago ran down the rest of the time resulting in the last of the seconds going to them at the signal of the horn. And just like that folks the second event is over. The princess is indeed safe from the dragon. Present Mike yelled as everyone cheered for the students. Considering the large amount of students who needed healing, we will now go to commercial break for 30 minutes before playing the fight video between the two students and the dragon. Nezu said cheerfully as he purposely withheld this footage for this moment to buy the two boys time to recover before what would happen next. The other students, with the exception of three girls, were confused as to what their principal meant but figured they may as wait for the video to play in 30 minutes to find out as they were all exhausted. UA Sports Festival, third person POV. With the second event over, Recovery Girl was now patching everyone up in the infirmary, quickly sending out those with lighter injuries first. Izuku unfortunately was still stuck in the dress as he needed to be healed right away according to Recovery Girl. Among the spectators there was a certain rabbit hero, who currently had a shit-eating grin plastered on her face. This was due to not the fight she was about to see of the two students, but the power she saw from Izuku earlier in the round. For a fighter as experienced as her she could easily tell that was not the young man's full power. In fact the thought of him pushing his power to its limit in a fight against her was quite tantalizing as she also has never been pushed to her full power. At least not since she was in middle school and going to those fight clubs when she was still inexperienced and not fully developed. But now that she has the experience and her body is in its prime she has reached a stalemate. And Ko on the other hand who was watching this was stuck contemplating what to do next after seeing how Izuku ended up. On one hand, she wanted to run down to the infirmary to see if Izuku was okay after getting thrown around like that. However on the other hand, doing so means she would need to speak to her grandmother as well. Yeah no way she was gonna do it. As a result she was stuck tapping her foot in her seat waiting for the break and the video to be over with. Yuabami the model, Hiro was in the stand seeing this and had a similar thought to some of the heroes from earlier. He has a cute face and he looks so natural in girls clothes. Perhaps I should make him my apprentice as both a model and a hero. She thought to herself resting her chin on her hand. She was considering the way he managed himself now, deciding it would be best to work on his confidence first before any actual training. Abandoned Warehouse H.I.M.I.K.O. Toga POV The UA Sports Festival was almost always boring for me to watch at the beginning due to the race being usually tame. But this year, there was so much going on. First the place became a winter wonderland, then a reindeer girl came bursting through a wall of ice like it was nothing. It was hilarious how she had two people on her back as she ran on all fours, though when I looked closely I realized she had hooves for feet. Since when do horses have horns? I asked myself out loud while watching through my latest friend's phone. They did not say anything when I asked if I could use it earlier. They just lay there on the ground napping with their eyes open like they all do after two weeks or so of me meeting them. 
When they got to the maze race thing I originally thought it was going to be boring, like them putting just a tiara on a random girl. But then I saw them. I do not know if they were a boy or a girl, but I did know one thing, I am going to sink my teeth into that cutie. They really looked just like a prince's oh wait, that was definitely a sizable penis bundled up those cute panties. Oh well, that just makes him even cuter since he can pull off those girls clothes so well. When I saw him crying I wanted to cuddle him and tell him he was going to be alright as I bury my face into his fluffy looking hair. Everyone was going crazy passing him around, most of them ignoring his injuries as they focused on getting points. Oh but a few of them actually took notice and fixed him up instead of focusing on moving. Though I can't blame him when he ran away on his own, though spiky hair was being really rude to Izukun. Once the second event was over, they announced another fight to show us before the real ones. If it involves that cool dragon lady and the bubbly girl with her flamethrower I can't wait to see it. Leg of Villain's Bar. Third person POV. All for one was watching the sports festival to see the quirks as he did every year with Dr. Daruma, Kurajiri, and Tamura. This year however he saw what he wanted to see, Izuku Midoriya and how he showed progress in controlling one for all. He was a tad saddened when his skirt flipped up to reveal he truly was a boy, then again the doctor using a few quirks could fix this. Izuku Midori reminded him so much of his little sister, right down to her contagious heroic spirit. He noticed that Tamira was giving the boy a look he recognized, it was the looks he would give to his little sister. Tamira, remember how I told you the story of the creation of One for All? He asked his student. You mean how you gave your brother a quirk that turned into One for All? Tamira Shigaraki asked his sensei unsure why he is bringing it up now. Allow me to tell you how before they declared themselves my little brother, they were my precious little sister, for whom I have the same feelings for as you do for the latest successor of her quirk Izuku Midoriya. All for one said chuckling at his disciple moment of confusion. If I am to pass on my quirk and throne to you, I may as well have you fulfill that dream I failed to do so over 200 years ago. He said as he noticed his student grin and joy knowing how he approved and supported his decision. UA Sports Festival Third person POV. Izuku was currently laying in a hospital bed getting healed and scolded by his unofficial grandmother. Recovery girl was annoyed right now as this felt like a repeat of Toshinori days when he was training still at UA. In general she had a lot of students who needed fixing but Izuku, Bakugo, and Todoroki simply needed the most time to heal out of all of them. By the time most of the students left the nurse's office Gran Torino had come in to check on Izuku Midoriya who Chiyo told them about. Well, well look who the cat dragged in. Recovery girl said already knowing he got lost earlier but told the security staff to leave him be. I came to see how the boy was doing after earlier. Gran Torino said as he walked over to see all three boys sleeping. However for some reason Midoriya was separated on the girl's side of the nurse's office from the other two boys. Recovery girl chuckled at this not expecting to get her earlier problem either like she did. Some of the boys were giving him certain looks so I put him as close to me as possible, which meant putting him on the girl's side. She said remembering how she broke two more of her canes earlier over some of their heads. Of course these hormonal idiots could not hold themselves back. He said sighing remembering how many times he kicked the hell out of Peeping Tom's back when he was a teacher. After taking a closer look at Izuku Midoriya face he noticed how similar he reminded him of his granddaughter. I bet Inko has a child his age as well now. Gran Torino said chuckling to himself remembering his better days before he and Chiyo went their ways. Recovery girl recalled how she had a similar thought she saw Izuku the day of the entrance exam after he took down the zero pointer. Yeah it is a shame we will probably never find out, will we? She asked him still hoping one day she could make it up to her. I doubt we will. He responded just as he noticed the other two boys waking up and noticing him. Glad to see you're awake. Since you can stand you can join the rest of your classmates in the locker room. Recovery girl said as they both nodded and hurried out as she insisted they did. As much as they were curious about the old man, they saw the two broken canes under her desk and decided not to find out today how hard she can hit. As they were walking out they almost bumped into All Might who was entering the nurse's office to check on Izuku forgetting the other two boys were likely still there. Who are you? They both exclaimed surprised to see this skeleton of a man who resembled All Might. All Might who was nervous about them recognizing him said the lie he usually tells people. I am All Might's secretary, he sent me here to check on young Midori as Nezu told him to be on standby just in case. He said as the two students believed him thinking this was due to the League of Villains attack at the USJ. However Todoroki did wonder at the back of his mind why All Might was so concerned about Midoriya. As for Bekugo, he was annoyed as to how someone as fragile as that damn nerd could catch All Might attention. After the students were a good distance away Recovery Girl hit him over the head. Are trying to point it out to people you have a direct connection to Izuku. Recovery Girl said crossing her eyes at All Might. Gran Torino simply covered his face with his hand and shook his head at his student still lacking any subtlety. I'm sorry but I am responsible for his well-being ever since I gave him my quirk. All Might said rubbing his head where she whacked him. As much as he agreed with one of the few who knew the secret of one for all while he was training with it. He still was trying his best to keep it on the down low by minimizing his time with Midoriya near the school or during school hours. That being said, I saw his mother from the stands and she is not exactly relaxed right now. He told them as they both just shrugged their shoulders at him. 
There is nothing we can do. Besides, she should have known how danger o where did my Tayaki go. Gran Torino was about to say something berating about the women when his Alzheimer's kicked in and he spouted his usual nonsense related to his favorite food. Recovery girl decided instead of waiting a few minutes for him to snap out of it, it would be quicker to attack him. And as always it was as his combat instincts kicked in, resulting in his mind sharpening instantly to its usual self. I know what you are both going to say, my mind is still sharp enough to continue my hero work. He exclaimed in self-defense. And you will run yourself into the ground at this rate, just accept retirement already. She said to him rubbing her temples genuinely worrying for her ex-husband's health. I became a hero because I refuses to stand around and do nothing while people are in danger. It is in my instincts to save someone in danger so I will be damned if I stop protecting people while I still have the strength to. Gran Torino responded to her as always refusing to back down from her on this subject. With all due respect, I think you have carried much more than your share of hero society's burden, perhaps you should consider this. All Might asked him unsure himself as he agreed with his former master's mentality. Oh come on you are the same as me Tashinori, if I retire then you should as well. Gran Torino responded back to him annoyed at his former student's hypocrisy right now. I stand corrected you both will run yourselves into the ground, and right now you're teaching that to Izuku. She said whacking them both over the head. This was when she noticed Izuku wake up. She smiled in response to finally see him awake after she used up a considerable amount of his energy. Here drink this, it is from Ponitsuno Tori, I checked it and it has more nutrients than my nutrient gum is. Recovery girl said handing him the milkshake the student she mentioned gave her. Izuku recognized the taste confirming that this was the same milkshake she made for him a couple weeks back. It's as good as ever. He said finishing it quickly getting back some of his energy, though he still felt pretty tired overall. The PAW systems came on and everyone but Izuku knew what was about to happen. Greeting students and spectators, I left you waiting long enough, let us begin the video of the two students versus essentially two pros. Nezu said in a cheerful tone still keeping Izuku confused. All of the students were gathered on the field to watch the video sitting cement constructed temporary seats. Basically you are about to watch a replay of the fight between Bakugo and Todoroki versus Rukiu and the third year Nejair Hado who was assisting her. Recovery girl cut to the chase seeing how surpassed Izuku was. Then she gave him a once over and realized he was still wearing those clothes from earlier. Toshi go to the student's locker room and get his uniform. Say I sent you I mean you pretty much blew your cover earlier if the look Todoroki gave was anything to go by. She said not yet realizing the hell Todoroki would raise later with his big mouth. UA Sports Festival. B-A-K-U-G-O and T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. Versus. Ryukyu and Nejair Hado. Third person POV. Ryukyu had just crushed that piece of rubble to size them up based off their reactions and neither one of the boys were shaken in the least. It looked like she might have an interesting fight on her hands. Fortunately for them her sidekick could not fight except for using the flamethrower. If her sidekick could fight to her full power then she alone could take them down without her help. Deciding to lead off with a proper quote-unquote dragon attack, she had Nejair fire the flamethrower. However Todoroki raised an ice wall to block it with ease, though it did melt apart immediately afterwards. Bakugo tried his AP shot to knock her out of the sky, but she just coiled her tail tightly into a cone she to disperse the force of the attack. Todoroki sent a wave of ice her way, but it was stopped in its path by the flamethrower immediately as he was not exactly what people would call peak condition. Bakugo attempted to break this stalemate of a situation after a few rounds by using his explosion to fly toward the hero. Going around the edge of the flame from the flamethrower, he reached her stomach and let off an explosion point blank. However she used the cone defies with her tail again to disperse it, but this time she took a small amount of damage due to his proximity. Since he could not fly like that without building up some sweat it took a few dozen more rotations before Ryukyu had to go down to the ground. This was a few moments after the horn for the 10 minute mark blew, unfortunately for the two boys the fight was about to get tougher. As for the wall shifts, Nezu decided to discreetly order Cementos through his earpiece to make sure the exit door remained behind the pro hero. Like a villain's bar. Third person POV. Tamura Shigaraki noticed how after taking a certain amount of damage the hero decided to play it safe by switching to land as well as changing her tactics. Those noobs better brace themselves, the boss attack pattern is about to change now that their health went from green to yellow. He said comparing this to a video game, or rather a few he played growing up that used that function. All for one found this amusing, as childish as it was to compare real life combat to a simple video game his pupil was not wrong. Now that she has taken too much damage to remain airborne in her tired state, she has decided to conserve her strength to prolong the fight. As always Nezu you test your students in the most amusing way possible don't you? He thought as he decided to go back to focusing on the fight with his pupil. UA Sports Festival. B-A-K-U-G-O and T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. Versus. Ryukyu and Nejair Hado. Third person POV. Ryukyu had had to admit to herself that Explosion Quirk packed a considerable punch even in her dragon form. Once she touched down she spread her wings and told Nejair to fire the flamethrower. As she did this Ryukyu began flapping her wings. This caused the fire to spread wider making it harder on Todoroki to reinforce his ice wall to block the flames. 
However, the less concentrated flame meant that his ice wall did not completely melt like it did before. Beck Hugo noticing the height of the flames came up with an idea to get in close to her again to finish her off. He waited a few turns of this back and forth to get his timing right before starting his plan of attack. After Todoroki moved his foot showing he was ready to throw up another ice wall, he prepared himself to move fast. He jumped just before the new ice wall was made while the older one was still short enough for him to jump over it. The wave of fire came next. This was when he put his plan into motion squatting while throwing one of his arms back for the next step. Finally after flames passed over him, he used the one hand behind his back to rocket forward in an instant. Normally he would need two hands, but the flames caused him to generate enough sweat that one hand was enough. Once he was a foot away after the explosion, he got ready to make one last leap forward before unleashing his explosion. However his plan was foiled as Rukyu who with her much greater experience saw this attack coming a mile away. With her tail cleverly hidden behind her back, she whipped it forward from her left side grabbing him. She pulled him behind her by pulling her tail up so she could slam him into the ground behind her so he could see the exit just a few feet away from him. Then flung him forward by whipping her tail over her head from the center of her body sending him in a straight line towards Todoroki who did not see his attack coming. As he was about to hit the ice wall Bakugo used his explosion quirk to destroy it sending Todoroki flying into the wall. Unfortunately for Bakugo he forgot that the power of this explosion was meant to propel him back a safe distance after attacking the dragon hero. Now however it sent him back to her, where she used her tail to whip him from her right side sending him flying into Todoroki. It was ironic how the defensive measure he took with his attack turned into what caused him more pain. Just as he was catching his breath Todoroki was slammed back into the wall by Bakugo both boys getting the air knocked out of them. With this the blow horn went off for the 5 minute mark and the exit still remaining behind her. Todoroki was in a tight spot and did not know what to do before he thought of what Izuku would do in his shoes. Then it hit him if Izuku was here he would do the complete opposite of what my dad has tried to teach me he thought before turning to Bakugo. Bakugo we need to work together, you cannot win without me. He said not realizing yet how he screwed up. Bakugo getting angry that someone was looking down on him gave Todoroki a right hook to his jaw. Don't look down on me half and half, not when you are using only half your power. He shouted at his classmate annoyed by his hypocrisy. Todoroki was confused by this as Bakugo once again charged the hero in an attempt to take her down on his own. What did I do wrong? All I suggested was that we work together cause he lacks power to do it himself. He thought to himself wondering what he did different from Midoriya. After a few moments of thinking on this he realized he was not doing it the same way Midoriya does it. He was doing it the same way his father did barking orders at people, and as much as he hated to admit it his classmate was right. Midori always gave his all no matter what the situation or who he was facing. Taking a deep breath he grabbed Bakugo's shoulder turning him around to face each other. What is it in Bakugo was cut off before he could finish his sentence. You're right I have been holding back while you and Midori were giving it your all. I am sorry for looking down on you if either of us deserve to fight him more it is you. But if we don't beat her then neither of us will get the chance to score points before time is up. I will use my fire and ice alongside your explosions, that way at least one of us can move past her, what do you say? Todoroki asked holding his hand out to Bakugo. The spiky-haired ash blonde was at a loss. Never before has anyone except his teachers said he was right without him threatening them. Fine, but we use my plan you got that Todoroki. He asked his classmate giving him a stern look expecting a yes. After his classmate shook their head he grinned knowing this was gonna be one hell of a fight now. If he was gonna lose this even, then the least he could do was kick a pro hero's ass before being eliminated. Telling him the plan they hurried to do it as time was running out on them. Bakugo ran at her preparing an explosion with the dragon hero getting ready to deflect him yet again. However he stopped just out of her tail's reach and attacked the ground spreading smoke and dust everywhere. The hero being blinded unable to see anything was then attacked by a torrent of flame surprising her as she assumed Endeavor Sun could only use his mother's ice. Make a layer of ice now. Bakugo shouted from her left making her put her guard up against the other boy thinking a binding attack was coming her way. Instead however a wave of ice tried to surround her before Nejire melted it with her smashing the rest. This also cleared up the dust revealing Bakugo to be on her right side now. When did he sneak up on me? She thought as she saw him preparing a close range AP shot. Chucking a rock at him she smirked as she he was about to get thrown into the wall yet again. However, that did not happen for some reason. Instead he shattered and the next instant she was shot with a barrage of explosions from behind. In the process not only was she stunned, her sidekick was knocked out and sent flying away from her as well. To top it off, the flamethrower got damaged and exploded on her back knocking her out, but not before noticing Bekugo on the left side. I see now, he used his reflection as a decoy while his partner caught my attention. Good teamwork boys, you two might make it as a hero after all. She thought before passing out. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. Nezu who was currently losing his shit laughing like the madman he was, was also one of the only few watching not stunned right now. Everyone reactions were better than the rodent-like creature had anticipated when he decided to hold off on showing this fight. Especially Endeavor reaction as he looked like he was trying to decide it between screaming his lungs out in rage or praise his son for taking down a pro hero. 
As for Aizawa, though, it was hard to tell if you did not know the man well. He too was shocked, but not even he was sure why his colleague, employee, was shocked. Even present Mike himself was for once speechless, and he loved to talk more than anyone else he knew. Unfortunately for him, Midnight began rubbing her thighs together at this video. It was a good thing everyone was in too much shock to notice. Aizawa was shocked that the two students who had the most trouble with teamwork ended up pulling off such an attack. And here I thought they were hopeless, Midoriya really is some kind of miracle worker. Aizawa grinned under his scarf seeing now why Recovery Girl is putting so much effort into him. Granted he still thought it was odd that the women who policy was go home as early as possible, spent her time after work on him. If Midoriya had a healing quirk it would make some sense to me, but his quirk was not a healing quirk like her quirk is, it is the opposite of combat quirk. He thought to himself just before present Mike regained his composure screaming his lungs out. With that folks the night of explosions and the night of ice has slayed the dragon. Present Mike screamed getting the viewers and crowd out of their state of shock. Both erupted in cheers at this epic fight of wills they just saw, even the ones who disapproved of Momo overuse of explosion were cheering for this awe-inspiring fight. Midnight fortunately pulled herself together before anyone really noticed what she was doing, nearly playing with herself. Ahem, ladies and gentlemen I am proud to tell you that these two students from the fight have secured their spots in round three. She announced like Nezu told her to do through her earpiece. Everyone was puzzled not understanding how since both boys had gained zero points during the course of this maze battle. To explain for those who do not know, as per Nezu's secret rule I was informed of after of the second event, whichever individual or team beat the dragon like the knights from Fairy Tales did got an instant pass. Midnight exclaimed cracking her whip as she bent down and winked five for the audience giving the two a not so subtle sultry gaze. The boys took a few steps back behind their other classmates just to be safe as both had heard the stories of her. But they were not on a team. Momo complained pointing to the two as they did not bother looking at her. Not cause they hated her, but more so because they could not argue with her fairly valid reason. That is true young lady, however I felt they both deserved a pass for improvising a team as they displayed incredible teamwork skills. As such the two young men will do battle shortly in order to decide who moves onward to the third event. Nezu said over the speaker system before taking a sip of his tea. On that note here is the scoreboard people. Midnight said pointing her whip towards the digital board to show the placement of everyone. Passing list. 1. Izuku Midoriya equals 0 points. 2. Shoto Todoroki equals 15 points. Katsuki Bakugo equals 74 points. 3. Honitsuno Tori equals 206 points. 4. Ryaiko Yanagi equals 206 points. 5. Ibarra Shizaki equals 136.12 points. 6. Meihatsum equals 120 points. 7. Suyu Asui equals 94.42 points. 8. Setsuna Takage equals 94.42 points. 9. Tetsu 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 equals 86.745 points. 10. Iyajiro Kirishima equals 86.745 points. 11. Achako Yuraka equals 85 points. 12. Kayoka Gyro equals 85 points. 13. Kosai Tsuburaba equals 78.685 points. 14. Nido Manama equals 78.685 points. 15. Itsuka Kendo equals 59.98 points. 16. Mina Ashido equals 59.61 points. Toru Hagakure equals 59.61 points. Non passing list. 1. Momo Yayarazu equals 60 points. 2. Yuikota equals 60 points. 3. Kanoko Komori equals 60 points. Why are we not passing when other people with lesser scores than us are passing? Momo exclaimed in outrage. The audience also lost on this as they too did not understand why they were not passing on to the third event. It is simple girls, you three were disqualified for your actions. Nezu said waiting a moment for it to sink in. What do you mean our actions, Shroom? Kinoko spoke also confused as to what the principal was talking about. Well let's start with you Ms. Komori shall we? You sent 107 students to the hospital with your quirk during the first event. Which the way you used it by the way, broke the Geneva Convention as this sports festival is a technically government funded event. As such you are disqualified from the third round as your punishment for sending so many students to the hospital like you did. He said sipping his tea is what he said sunk in. Next up is Ms. Yeirazu who broke the hero minimal force laws repeatedly during both the first and second event. As such it was either this or a two week suspension after the sports festival which I assume you would not prefer. Nezu asked her at the end noticing how she bit her lower lip in frustration. Finally Ms. Kodai your reason would also have gotten all your other teammates disqualified if not for the others. You made a back deal with Midnight for information on the event for reasons I do not know, but that hardly matters. Stealing classified event information like that was clever on your part, but sadly the drones picked up your explanation to your teammates during the plane ride. As for you Midnight, I will discuss your punishment after the sports festival. But since your quirk is best for putting an end to an out of control fight you will be given a second chance to referee. He said enjoying how Midnight was literally quaking in her boots. People could call her things like pervert or whore as much as they wanted, but when it came to her poker face, acting skills, no one could beat her. You had two weeks before, the sports festival, 
third-person POV. Yui Kodai was walking to a certain female teacher who she knew was as interested as Izuku in a skirt as she was. She had heard rumors going from the third years down who originally overheard two teachers talking about it. Apparently Midnight Sensei made a bet with Nezu and the other teaching staff involving the second event of the sports festival. On her way she noticed that Pony was talking to Riaiko about something while holding a thermos of some kind. Deciding it did not matter what it was, she continued to the 18-plus hero art teacher's office to strike a deal with her. Reaching the door she knocked on it waiting for a response in case she was busy. Come in darling. Midnight said seeing it was Yui Kodai from Class 1B stepping past her doorway and into her office. So what brings you here cutie? She asked the student leaning forward on her desk resting her chin in the palm of her hands with her eyes half shut. This is unusual, I doubt she is here for a cup of tea. What business does she have with me? Midnight thought gesturing for her student to sit down. I came here to make a deal with you. If you help me win the sports festival's second event then when I come in first overall I will share some private time of Izuku with you. Yui said as the heroine raised an eyebrow at this offer of hers. How will you guarantee that private time? Midnight asked her curious as to what she had up her sleeve. I will declare a wager to everyone else. Winner takes him out on a date and I have no doubt all the girls will agree. Yui Kodai said more than willing to do a threesome with her if it meant she got a taste of Izuku. Oh wow, now that is devious girl taking advantage of their egos. Unfortunately for you I have to put a stop to your plan, at least till little Izuku is ready for that kind of relationship. Midnight thought planning to put her to sleep when the time came. Okay, but you should be warned I love girls just as much as I love guys, maybe even more so. Midnight said giving her a wink as she laid back in her chair giving her melons a little shake making the student blush. Though Yui Kodai did not know it, Midnight left out the part of beating the dragon so she would not get the guaranteed chance by forming a team to specifically beat her. After the student left Midnight called Nezu to tell him what was going to happen with her. If she is foolish enough to speak about it to someone at the sports festival then the drones will hopefully pick it up. Though this will put another dent in your reputation, are you sure? He asked her already used to people giving him crap for not being human or his harsh methods of teaching. Don't worry I am already used to people either jerking off to me or giving me crap, instead of being grateful for me trying my hardest to save their lives. She said sighing as she knew from the beginning of the hero course what the more efficient use of her quirk brought. That was why she created her whole 18 plus hero persona, if people were gonna call her things like horror or pervert then she may as well do it herself. Granted this did not change the fact she was tempted to go out and buy a western style dress for Midoriya to wear during the event she had planned. You know for all the time you goof around as the 18 plus hero, you are still the second smartest person in this school aside from me. Unless you count Midoriya that is, still though are you sure wish to go on keep that from both him and her. Nezu asked her still curious as to why he was the only one she has told that bit of info to. For now yes, he really does look just like her in her younger years minus those diamond shaped freckles that is. She said remising about her sister from the few memories she had. She was barely two years old when her 12 year old big sister and her were separated and she got adopted by a family. Still though I wonder how long till granny figures it out. Nimiri thought to herself stretching herself. Thank you for doing this Kayama. Nezu said sighing as he knew this was the best bet to get permission to put an official leash on a possible threat to the next welder of one for all. Not that he thought she would ever cause him any serious physical harm, but the trauma of being violated will definitely make it harder for him to focus on mastering that quirk. After that he turned towards the window of his office to overlook the entire campus. With evidence of all for one returning I will need to make sure to prepare Midoriya as much as possible. He said not liking the idea of sending such a young man into battle against the ultimate evil. However it will most likely have to be done, especially if all for one is more healed than all might is when the final confrontation occurs. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. Hold on Principal Nezu, why are mine and Toru names beside each other like Bakugo and Todoroki? Mina exclaimed pointing to the board. Both girls worried about what answer they might receive, granted both wanted to be in denial of the obvious answer before them. Mina noticing how nervous Toru was feeling gave her hand a light squeeze to help calm her new girlfriend down a smidge. Since you two girls tie for last place you will unfortunately have to fight for 16th spot. Nezu responded in a cheery tone, despite the fact he felt it was a waste to not have these two determined girls in the mix. There is no need sir, Toru said letting go of Mina hand stepping forward. Are you trying to argue with the rules laid out by your principal? Nezu asked wondering what she was about to do. Though he had a feeling that her next decision would not come from her level-headed judgment as such things should for a person in a situation like this. I am going to quit, Mina deserves to move forward more than me. Toru shouted shocking everyone. Mina began arguing with her trying to convince to let her drop out instead as she had gotten enough of the limelight as is. Nezu however chuckled at this making both girls go silent with the rest of the audience. Very well young Hagakure, I will allow for your request as you were the first to do so. Nezu said as the board changed to remove her name from the list. What happened next however surprised him, which almost never happened to the point it last happened a few years ago. I also want to quit, that way Bakugo can go into the third round at full strength. Todoroki said making everyone gasp. Well that is everyone except Bakugo who walked up to him trembling in anger at this declaration. 
What the hell are you doing half and half? I do not need your damn pity. Bakugo shouted in his face as he grabbed him by his shirt collar. I would have lost if not for you, so make sure to give Midori a proper fight for number one. Todoroki said shoving Bakugo off of him. Hey Tempi H. Fine but I am going to fight him at my full power cause I want to, not cause you want me to ice boy. Bakugo said walking back to the locker room. Nezu was shocked to see Endeavor Sun going from cold hearted to putting his fellow classmate before himself. Very well young Todoroki, I will accept your decision on the condition that you go to the internship I decide for you understood. Nezu asked him getting a nod from the boy as well as an angry shout accompanied by a pillar of fire from the number two hero in the audience. The fighting brackets were then shown for everyone to see. Thankfully for Nezu he was able to multitask during his speech and make the necessary alterations to the original setup. Round 1. Izuku Midoriya vs. Mei Hatsum. Tetsu 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 vs. Kayoka Jiro. Nido Manama vs. Tsuyu Asui. Kosai Tsuburaba vs. Ajiro Kirishima. Ryaiko Yanagi vs. Setsuna Takage. Ponitsuno Tori vs. Ibarra Shizaki. Hitsuka Kendo vs. Mina Ashido. Katsuki Bekugo vs. Achako Uraraka. S-H-O-O-T-O-O-O. Endeavor roared just above the stands as a pillar of fire erupted from him melting a hole all the way through the ceiling of the arena. Fortunately no one got hurt, but he was still extremely upset to say the least that his son just gave up instead of fighting. After stomping off for a bit of a walk he remembered what his son said. Wasn't Midoriya that girl playing the role of the princess? He said to himself not having paid much attention to anyone but his son this whole time. If my son is infatuated with that girl all I have to do is break her and this ridiculous rebellious streak will finally come to an end. He thought to himself thinking his plan was genius. Midori I suggest you prepare yourself, I will use the internship as an excuse to bring you to my agency, there I will teach you what values you should be teaching my son. Endeavor said grinning thinking she would never refuse an offer from the number two hero unless the number one hero made an offer. With that the audience had the option to leave to get something to eat. While the remaining contestants who did not pass had the option to participate in other smaller games to show off for the audience. Those who did move on to the final 16 got something to eat, with Izuku getting dressed into a pair of gym clothes deciding to join his classmates. Despite the other three telling him it was a bad idea, he went anyway meeting Midnight on the way there who traded spots temporarily with Vlad so she could get something to eat. Granted that was all after he realized who Gran Torino was from the news of hero fights he watched going into a fanboy mode. Midnight Sensei how are you? He said not stammering for once actually surprising himself. On good Midoriya, oh and you can call me Nimiri if you want. She said ruffling his hair as he blushed. I I I can't do something like that. He said covering his face looking away from her. Though for some reason the way she played with his hair felt as similar to how recovery girl or his mother would. Midnight found this amusing as he was just as much of a nervous wreck as her big sister was when their mother joked with the two of them. I told you to call me that so you can, or if you want you can call me auntie. She said leaning into his face. His arms flailed around his head as he stuttered in confusion not sure which one was worse for someone to hear him call her. I am joking so relax, I would feel super old if you called auntie you know. Midnight said stifling her giggle as she pulled him into a sideways hug. I cannot wait to see everyone's reactions when they see me hugging Izuku like this. Midnight thought to herself as Izuku had calmed down a bit going to a light dusting of pink on his cheeks from the previous red he was. UA Sports Festival. Cafeteria. Third person POV. The room was filled with people either eating already or those waiting in line to get food from lunch rush. Those individuals ranged from four different categories heroes, students, parents of the students, and finally those who worked for UA. That being said the room was pretty much divided into thirds based off those previously mentioned groups. One of those thirds was the faculty members both heroes and non-heroes talking about the students or other work-related topics. Another third of them were the students and parents eating and talking together as many were being introduced to one another for the first time. The last third was pretty much divided in two halves with one of those being more cramped than the other. And never with only a few other heroes willing to sit anywhere close to him, let alone the same table even his own son got food from a vending machine to avoid him. The other half of the cramped space was where the other heroes were trying to enjoy the most out of this tense lunchroom atmosphere. Then all went silent when two people who most never expected to see hugging each other like they were walked into the room. Midnight was grinning as she had her left arm wrapped around Midoriya waist, with it weaving under his armpit and over his shoulder. Her hand was pressing his head sideways into her chest as though her ample mounds were fleshy pillows for him. Everyone was mouths agape at this, but the two of them despite one of them being more embarrassed than the other, went into the food line. Two katsudan lunch rush, extra toppings if you don't mind. Midnight said letting go of Izuku so they could grab their trace, though she made sure he did not leave her side. On their way to the pro heroes where she knew Midoriya would be the most happy, Endeavor stepped into their path. Izuku Midoriya correct. My son may not be here at the moment but even so a conversation between us surely be for your benefit. Endeavor said placing a hand on their arm as he had to literally look down on the student due to the height difference between them. Um, she has a good amount of muscles, she is a little on the thin side but a shift in training should help her reach the ideal body for birthing a strong heir. 
he thought waiting for her to respond. Since he already had the perfect quirk combination due to his son, he noticed that his son physique was more on the fragile side like his wife. So when he rewatched the second round on speed up pausing here and there he noticed how her quirk generated large amounts of energy. Between her quirk being able to synchronize with his son quirk perfectly in terms of offspring, and her physical strength he knew that their child would be the successor he needed. I was so focused on my wife's quirk I neglected her naturally frail body, but with this girl I can correct the mistake. And ever thought not realizing that Izuku was shaking before he got slapped by midnight, causing him to glare at her. Let go of my student. Now, Midnight said glaring at the man who was scaring her nephew with his violation of their personal space. Granted she technically violated his personal space earlier, but unlike him she did not do it in a creepy death grip on his arm. Everyone around her either held in their breaths at the sight of her slapping Endeavor or gasped fairly audibly. You think you can get stand up to me pervert? Endeavor questioned her insulted that this joke of a hero in his eyes was daring to stand up to him. A few of his psychics who came with him from his agency were standing up in their seats ready to move in to back up their boss. She can talk back to you however she likes when you are manhandling her student. Mandalay from the Wild Wild PP Cat stepped up to stand beside her. The rest of their group followed making Endeavor back down before the PR nightmare could begin for him. Damn that group of women, don't they know their place as heroes under the number two hero? He thought before walking back to his seat in a huff. With that midnight walked Izuku with her and the group of heroes to the table they were sitting at. What followed was a pleasant lunch conversation as he asked them a lot, and I mean a lot of questions. After a bit it was time for her to leave a few minutes before the students, along with the other first round students. Before leaving however she pulled a small box of mints out of her cleavage making Izuku stutter before she gave him one and had one herself. With that out of the way it was time for the first of the many battles to come today. UA Sports Festival, third person POV. The crowds were roaring with excitement as a remix of Ride of the Valkyries played with present Mike announcing the two contestants. It is here folks the battles you have been waiting all day for. Representing the support course, first up is the battle between the Mistress of Machines, the wife of Wiring Mei Hatsum. Present Mike shouted as Pyrotechnics went off behind Hatsum who without warning anyone flew through the entrance. Doing a few loops before landing and waving her hands at the crowd while discreetly zooming on the support company's seats to see them whispering to each other. And for her opponent, representing class 1 of the hero course, the forest green princess, the diamond-faced knuckle duster Izuku Midoriya. Present Mike shouted before getting smacked over the head by Eraserhead for continuing to call him a princess. Izuku did his best to walk into the ring while not shaking and maintaining his poker face taking a mental knot of the crowd's excitement. Please don't expect me to do anything flashy. He mentally pleaded to the audience in silence hoping they will not end up booing him. Are both fighters ready? Midnight asked them as they both nodded to her indicating yes. I know I have to stay objective but good luck Izuku. She thought before raising her whip. Begin. Midnight declared just before a dance of absolute chaos and insanity had begun before everyone's eyes. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. The moment Midnight declared the start of the fight Mei went on the attack to show off her babies. Behold my sticky baby. She said as she flew up and shot capsules half the size of baseballs filled with glue at Izuku who began dodging frantically. Her speed when shooting was so fast that the audience could not keep track where she was aiming, making it look like she was firing at random. For her it was refreshing to have someone who thinks and reacts at a normal pace like her, as she has to usually slow down her thought process for those around her so she could properly explain her babies to them when they asked, or in this case help her demonstrate her new baby for much longer period of time than a normal person could. The sentiment Izuku somewhat shared with her as he too had slowed down for the people around him by concentrating. They turned away for a moment after a minute or so of this to see how the support companies were feeling so far about this baby. Now that is most certainly a unique name for an invention. President Mike said trying his hardest to not make a penis joke. Midnight and Eraserhead on the other hand both rolled their eyes knowing his childish humor he was actually suppressing. Nezu who knows President Mike well also knows the voice hero knows better than to use dirty jokes when on air like this. Granted he never really made them to begin with as those were more midnight thing than his, his were more childish. And simply loud. Izuku was caught off guard to say the least as he was not expecting a glue gun to be fired at him, especially this rapid fire succession. Unfortunately for him her ammunition seemed to be plentiful based off the size of the ammunition and the sizable pouch she had at her waist. Being unable to get the few seconds to hold still and attack with a Delaware smash he had no choice but to stumble and dodge. While doing this he noticed how her jetpack functioned, and he realized her limitless power source was also her greatest weakness. What was making his situation so dire was the fact that every attack he dodged meant he had less room to move around and after. If he did not think of a plan soon he would be unable to move and left at her air superiority mercy. Luck smiled upon him however as he noticed her looking away from him for a few seconds. This moment of her not firing gave him the chance he needed that her swift reloading did not allow him. Unleashing a Delaware smash after calculating the trajectory, speed of the capsule, the power of his attack, her position when she would recover from his attack, and the moment the ball of glue would get into position. Midoriya looked like they were in a tight spot for a while there but managed to luck out when his air attacked just now. 
present Mike said being careful not to spoil his glue ball surprise for his opponent. That was when the voice hero noticed the mouse principal snickering to himself and his friend raising an eyebrow at him. What is so funny you two? He asked them unsure why they were laughing. Aizawa told him to wait till after the fight for an explanation of what he apparently did not know. Nehatsum fired off her gun only to a second later to have herself swept off her feet mid-air by a strong wind force, her jetpack pulling her a few feet closer to the ground before riding herself into proper standing position facing him. She was about to fire at him when some sort of liquid exploded in her top vent that was sucking in air. This however triggered her to soar upward due to the hot air being vented from below that now had no counter force to keep it in check quickly turning off her pack before going to high, but as she was about to hit the ground she got knocked back by another strong air blast. To avoid getting knocked out of the arena before she could show off more, she launched her grappling her hooks from her utility belt. The prongs got stuck in the ground holding her in place on the edge of the arena now realizing the air blasts came from him. Realizing she could not stop herself from getting knocked out again from this, she took off her jetpack turning it around. Then turning it back on knowing it could not suck in air anymore, she let go putting up with the minor pain from the hot air as it launched itself at her opponent. Izuku jumped up to dodge it, already knowing what she would do next he prepared a Delaware smash. Except after the glue attack another came. The second attack she used was something that looked like a disc launcher that fired a small net. Originally she made the net bigger but decided it was better to put a few extra nets in her utility belt and it was arguably a better size for capture as well. Though a net covering their full body would be better for entangling them overall, her smaller nets were different. They were an odd cross between a bola and a net so when they hit his outstretched hand the balls spun around interlocking. Now her opponent's arms were tied together in a way that even most strength quirk users could not easily rip apart without breaking their arms. Izuku landed, deciding to continue his charge surprising her making her smile in excitement. Unfortunately for Izuku he was too used to punching, so switching to kicking techniques threw him off a bit, allowing her to dodge them after calling back her grappling hooks. As this went on he was getting frustrated as the hero who techniques he watched were useless on this flat surface. Flat. Why did I not realize it sooner? He thought going from kicking to stomping the ground repeatedly at 10%. This resulted in large bits of the floor splitting upward on the odd angles he needed them to. They found this odd, then she noticed as she kept on dodging him failing to aim at him through all the dirt and dust his stomping created. She had noticed that now there was essentially no walking space between the large flat pieces of ruble. The resulted in her not having the strength to push them down instantly so she had to jump and dash in between the different ones. However since he was faster than her, this tighter space now made it difficult for her to have any time to aim. This was despite her being able to keep up with Izuku fast thinking that usually outpaced most. Bakugo was able to keep up with him as well. Well if you consider attacking every passing second like a Pomeranian with rabies keeping up with him. Elsewhere at the nurse's office Gran Torino was chuckling making the other two in his company raise an eyebrow. Since when do you laugh at property damage? Recovery girl asked him wondering why he is not berating Izuku instead. Since he was only really taught how to punch thanks to a certain someone. Gran Torino said looking at his former student for a second to make them cough into their hands and rub the back of their head. He decided to change the battlefield in order to make use of my fighting style deeming it most effective against her. He said waiting with surprised eagerness to see what the kid could learn just from watching. Back at the fight, despite yet being able to tear apart the net at 5% power Izuku Midoriya had still managed to get a lead on Meihatsum. He would have used 10% but after feeling how it was straining his legs he decided to play it safer and not break his arms. So if I got their strategy right people they decided to give up on breaking their hands free and turn themselves into a human pinball. Present Mike said getting literally dizzy trying to keep up with where Izuku was on the battlefield. Aizawa just gave up already trying to keep up with his squirrel brain student and decided to watch when they kicked Meihatsum. Nezu simply sipped his tea seeing how long till they had a grand Torino with a strength quirk instead of an air-based quirk. Midnight was smirking at this sight enjoying the thoughts of how right now, her grandparents are probably arguing over the sight of this bizarre and unintentional homage to her grandfather. After a few minutes of this bouncing off his makeshift walls getting the hang of this fighting style to a for the moment satisfactory degree and seeing Mei in his ideal spot as it could begun his attack. Finding Mei he called out to her making it look that he was going straight at her. Instead when she pulled out her glue gun to try and stick him in place to give a speech about her device. He rolled to the side by stomping only his left foot, landing on the wall to his left before going into his actual straight attack. They quickly firing her glue gun at him again, was surprised when he stomped and straightened out ducking under it. Rolling to a stop just beneath her on his back with his legs pulled close he kicked her with both feet sending her flying to the edge yet again. However this time she had to use four grappling hooks suspending her in midair, two in the wall and two of them in two pieces of the floor of the arena. Izuku followed her when she was sent flying so when she got suspended in midair he accidentally landed on her basically straddling her waist. Something Midnight was enjoying the sight thinking of how exciting they would be to use during actual sec. While doing this he gave her utility belt a horse jokey like kick that he got to practice earlier thanks to Pony Tsunotori. Unfortunately he kicked the wrong one that resulted in the two in the wall retracting pulling them back into the arena. 
Izuku slammed his feet down on the prongs on the ground to try and stop them from slamming into the concrete at high speed. Though they stumble out of the opposite end of the arena since she landed first she was disqualified so he won. However the position they landed in where she was straddling his waist now while holding down his arms, panting heavily made it a little awkward to say the least. And just like that my darlings, we have our first fighter moving on, I-Z-U-K-U-M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A. Midnight declared as the board changed. The crowd was applauding for both fighters as the two decided to now explain for them and Mike. The reason Nezu was laughing before was the fact that it was not an accident, but I assume calculated. Aizawa said bewildering the audience. To make it clear, Izuku Midoriya IQ falls just a few points behind mine, essentially making them the new officially recognized second smartest person in all of Japan. Nezu said as though it was nothing while everyone was shocked. During this moment of shock Mei Hatsum jumped up and gave him a helping hand to get back up on his feet. To be more precise Midoriya and Hatsum are both on par with me due to a brain condition called synaptic overload syndrome. I will explain it in a way that anyone who is not a doctor will be able to understand. So, there is the phenomenon that I just mentioned, that causes the brain to be unable to properly turn off and stop processing under any circumstances. In that way, even while sleeping from exhaustion their minds are still running background calculations and operations. The side effects could include insomnia, hyperactiveness, muttering, stimming, and other such symptoms as an example. Fortunately only Hatsum is displaying the hyperactive trait, unlike Midoriya. He said making Aizawa regret slightly allowing Midoriya to stay in his class. Vlad on the other hand wanted to punch himself in the face for letting Aizawa take such a potential filled student from him. While this conversation was being broadcasted a new one was beginning between the two competitors. Doing so as they talked in such fast mumblings that Nezu had to play a live recording of it on lowered speed for people to understand. Your jetpack was incredible, other than a small electrical charge to get it started, the rest of the energy is clean and renewable. Izuku said impressed by her jetpack run almost entirely on clean energy. I know, I was amazed how you managed to figure out my baby. They said surprised that someone outside the support course even someone understood her work. Well, it quite efficient actually the main power turbine on the back continuously drew in large amounts of air. This in turn created a powerful pushing force as a side effect which was pushing you down a bit from right above you. While you used the cooling system that expelled heat to push you up from the bottom, by adjusting the two you could maintain whatever altitude you wanted. With extra heat expulsion from the sides you could also change direction whenever you needed or wanted to. However when you were flipped around the pushing force from above became a pulling force. This was due to the funnel of hot air created by your under vents pulling the cold air which your top vent essentially made into a pillar above you. Izuku said on a bit of a rant, but for me she drank in every word, starting to imagine them working on more of her babies together, and for some reason a child calling her mother showed in that fantasy who also began assisting them. Yeah unfortunately the greatest part of my baby design ended up being a major weakness in a fight. But I think you appreciate my babies. May said admitting her baby had a few flaws in its current state that she would need to correct. Yet still excited to find someone other than her parents who did not yell at her for hard work in creating these mechanical miracles. Who in their right mind wouldn't. It can be used for almost every hero. Hundreds no thousands could use it for faster travel to crime scenes no matter their quirk. Izuku told her already imaging how many heroes could benefit from a more refined version of this device. For a moment Mei Hatsum stopped thinking about everything else around her and all she could see was her fantasy from before springing to life. Her in her own personal lab working on a new baby as he comes, hugging her from behind handing her a tool. The small girl with his green excited eyes and their pink hair matching her own color yet matching his messiness. A set of diamond freckles like his looking like they were squished together as she smiled with an ear to ear grin holding up a small box holding some materials. When she realized he had been asking her this whole time if she was okay looking concerned, she realized she needed to assure him she was okay before popping the question. I am fine don't worry, May said waving off his concern with a laugh as that was literally nothing compared to her previous home lab explosions. After he looked like he was calm again she asked him what she wanted to know. McBaby's with me. She shouted in excitement forgetting how to ask him properly as she tackled him to the ground. While he was a stuttering red in the face mess, the crowd was either shocked into gasping or equally red at such a bold declaration, with some doing both. Seeing this her protective instincts kicked in and she pried the girl off of him while Cement Us brought Cement up to her neck to restrain her. Ahem, despite me being the 18 plus hero, even I think declaring that then making an attempt for their virginity in front of the world is a bit much. Midnight said clearing her throat getting the girl attention interrupting their conversation which was leading to a somewhat dangerous situation. Waiting a few seconds for it to stop she continued. Well damn midnight, and here I thought you were the thirstiest person around. Either that or power loader is teaching something extra in the support course considering how surprised you were. Present Mike said dying of laughter at this sight till Aizawa smacked him upside the head. Power loader who was in the teacher section was covering his face with his hands in embarrassment at what his student just did. 
the grandfather of said student was already writing a speech to give to the parents of the boy to not press charges against her. Still all jokes aside I gotta say you were firing so fast my eyes couldn't even keep up. I am amazed you got lucky that your aim was as accurate as it was despite it being random. Present Mike said receiving a confused look from his two co-announcers as well as the two students along with Midnight. What do you mean random? We were moving at a normal speed right. They asked Present Mike the first question, aiming the second at Izuku as she turned to him receiving a nod of yes. I am afraid to even ask this but what do we appear like to the two of you when we move and you two do not try to match our speed for thinking or moving? Aizawa asked already worried of the answer he was about to receive. Though a small part of him hoped they were not like Nezu who always complained to him how staff meeting took too long for his liking. Because it takes everyone too long to process new information given to them at said meetings while he is already thinking on several topics ahead of them. By the time you think of one idea and think it over I already have had several pop up in my head and already thought them over in almost every possible angle. Izuku said turning to Mei who also agreed with him. For Izuku that was why he could almost instantly analyze any quirk he sees so fast that a few times police officers asked if he had an intelligence boosting quirk. In terms of moving, well I thought it was normal for everything to slow down in a fight like it is one of those slow motion scenes in movies and shows. He said remembering the USJ incident where he was able to give the police a supposedly too detailed and creepily precise description of the leader of the attack. He still found it rude since they were the ones that asked him for as much details as he could give them. For everyone hearing this it made him sound like he was a main character in his own anime, boggling them whether he hit his head a little too hard or not. But even if my reflexes act in time, I don't always have the speed or the room to dodge an attack in time. He said remembering all the times in middle school where he saw an attack pretty much coming a mile away but was unable to do anything to stop it. May was agreeing with him again how it is also how she views the world around her. Both individuals found it troublesome to when their physical abilities could not keep up with their minds when they wanted them to. However with the newly acquired power of one for all his body could now start to keep up with his mind in terms of speed or power. Nezu was cackling like a madman getting everyone out of their shocked days after hearing this absurd explanation. Looks like we need to give young Hatsum a proper IQ test as well don't we power loader. Looks like she might be close to my IQ as well. Nezu said finding it too joyful to have more people who could understand his pains. Everyone else watching however were worried how most likely the three smartest individuals in Japan were a chimera-like mouse creature in a business suit, a pink hair mad scientist who uses inappropriate phrasing, and a hero fanboy from what little they could tell of him. I bet you didn't have Aizawa help you with this for Midoriya. Power loader called out pointing at the announcer's booth. You're correct, I did not get his assistance with it since I did this before young Midoriya even enrolled let alone applies to UA. Nezu said making the support course teacher slump down into his seat sniffling. This however made many people hearing this wonder why Nezu tested his IQ before UA or how the rodent had met the young man. When All Might began training Midoriya Nezu checked his records and found it odd how he had perfect test scores but so many incident reports. This made him suspect his school was covering up for another student at the time, only to find the unfortunate truth recently. Still as a result he decided to give Midoriya a proper test, and sent in the results to hopefully help remove those stains his middle school left on his record if chose a school other than UA. Oh right, can't wait for our baby to help us make more babies in the future, May exclaimed before getting carried off by Cementos after she squeezed her way out of the cement somehow to give him a peck on the cheek. For her parents however they were overflowing with excitement as they actually have a genuine chance to become grandparents now. Her grandfather who was still watching this was unsure whether to be even more worried cause her crush was just like her, or to be less worried since this means he can actually survive her. Most of the others after him who were watching were jealous that she got to declare something like that to the whole world before they could. Izuku stood there in confused silence for a minute before speaking up to ask a question to no one in particular. Was she talking about making an invention to help us make more inventions, or was she talking about an actual baby? He asked unsure of what she was talking about. Unfortunately for your peace of mind Midoriya, I think she meant a real baby. Aizawa told him in a deadpan tone knowing what kind of trouble he might experience thanks to his encounters with Mrs. Joke, who shouted let's do a double marriage ceremony with them. Her usual abandon for the social normal still there. Endeavor did not see any of this as he was busy walking around to try and find his son as well as to clear his head. Shoto was smart and did not go back to his class seats after the fighting began but sneaked his way back into the nurse's office where recovery girl allowed him to watch the fight. When Izuku got back however she had him lay down immediately to check his legs despite him saying he was alright. And Ko however in the stands was concerned about what kind of other crazy girl's eyes her son may have drawn towards him. Todoroki on the other hand was unknowingly blushing when he saw Izuku began panting in the fight. Fortunately for him the other three in the room who were being careful of what they said earlier due to him being in the room did not notice his blush. With that Cementos needed a full 30 minute of work to fix the field, but once that was done the next two came out. Alright folks first we have representing class 1B. The Wall of Steel, one half of the manly duo Tetsu 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 Tetsu. 
present Mike said as the young man came walking out clashing his metal fists together. On the other side his opponent and representative of class won a hero course. The mistress of music, the rocker who will literally rock you to the core with her music Kayoka Gyro. He said as she then walked out from her side getting into the ring. Just like before midnight asked them if they were ready and the match was declared to begin. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. The fight began with a surprisingly forward attack from Gyro, who was meeting Tetsu Tetsu by running towards him. This caught him off guard, but for a reason he did not understand she brought her two earphone jacks together for a rather surprising attack. Results were a sonic boom sending him flying back, the impact knocking the wind out of him despite his metal coating. In fact his metal coating caused the vibrations to carry throughout his body much easier, even amplifying them a bit causing him more pain than other people. He was dazed gripping hard on his consciousness trying to avoid blacking out. For actual time this was only a few moments but those moments felt like hours to him as he was trying to wrap his head around what happened to him. Granted his ears were still ringing like all hell, however he did not remember his classmate Monoma telling him about this attack. This surprised him cause Monoma was an expert at quirk analysis due to how his quirk functioned, which as a result had him studying quirk science a lengthy bit he claimed as he needed to be able to analyze any quirk he copied quickly. However Tetsu Tetsu and Monoma were not the only ones surprised, Gyro was just as surprised as them. Not even she knew she could do that until now, as she thought she could only use her heartbeat as the base for her sound attacks. First Midoriya and now Gyro. What have you been teaching those students of yours Eraserhead? Present Mike exclaimed not seeing nonsense like this since the big three did their sports festival for their first year. Aizawa groaned internally at this as whenever his students did something out of the expected everyone assumed he taught them it. I did not know she could do that either. He said in his always monotone voice. According to her quirk file she could only use her heartbeat as the sound for her attack. Looks like I might need recovery girl and problem child to give her quirk another assessment. Aizawa thought already seeing the headache that was coming his way down the road. Nezu however was enjoying this as he had previously speculated that her own heartbeat was not the only sound she could use. However this now proved him right. This also meant he would need to get her quirk properly assessed so she could properly train. Izuku who was watching it right now from the safety of the temporary nurse's office also was happy his assessment about her quirk was right. The reason he was there was due to recovery girl not wanting him to leave her side as much as possible. After what happened with Endeavor earlier and what happened with Hatsum after their fight, she was somewhat worried. More specifically she was worried about who would approach him next, maybe the Hero Public Safety Commission. Back to the fight Gyro was thinking she would have had to attack his ears directly to force him into submission. Which meant she would have had to ran at him, assuming he was as tough as Kirishima in terms of defense. Looking as though she was right he still appeared so as he was already getting up, so she decided to use the same attack from before despite not quite understanding it. However when she used it this time it resulted in something unexpected from the last time. Tetsu Tetsu stood his ground blocking the sides of his face with his arms while bent over looking at the ground. After this passed he took advantage of gyro confusion as to why he withstood the attack this time to try and strike back at her. Unfortunately for him his attack did not go as he originally had planned resulting in him tripping for a second smashing his two forearms together. This resulted in the vibrations in his arms intensifying one another as his metal skin shattered before propelling the sharp shrapnel-like pieces at gyro. Though she reacted quickly when he tripped by crossing her arms over her face in an X shape protecting her eyes, nose, and mouth. However the sides of her face, her forearms, and her ribs were cut or stabbed with shrapnel, recovering before she could. Also because he feared another sound attack of whatever that was, he ran at her punching her midsection sending her flying to the edge. She would have gone over it, but she used her earphone jacks as anchors to keep herself in place so she would not lose. Chasing after her he applied a new metal coating thinking she could not use that sound attack again after his last punch. However just barely catching her breath she tried to use that attack again. However that ended up being her own undoing. To protect himself from her possible attack while still being able to attack her, he covered his front by putting together his forearms. Unknowingly however this deflected her sonic boom attack as it was close range sending him flying back but just barely conscious. Gyro however was knocked out instantly due to her better hearing and sent flying into the stadium wall with small amounts of BLD trickling from her ears. With that the battle ended and Midnight called for emergency medical bots in a hurry after running to Gyro to make sure she was okay. Tetsu Tetsu won moving on to the next round. And with damage to the ring being minimal the next fight took only a 10 minute wait. Izuku helped recovery girl with their injuries as best he could, which she complimented him for, but made sure to tell him not to let it get to his head. With the field ready present Mike began to introduce the next two fighters. After the first two intense fights let hope that the energy does not die down with the coming fights. He said getting the crowd to cheer pushing him to introduce the next fighters. Representing class 1A is the green queen herself, the frog princess from the next pond over Tsui Wasui. Present Mike said as she walked through her door. And her opponent representing class 1B is the gentleman of quirk jeans, the master of mimicry Nido Monoma. He said as the blonde walked through his entrance with four quirks under his belt. Both fighters indicated to midnight they were ready and the battle had begun. Suyu jumped right into the air to get above him, shooting her tongue at him to try and bind him. 
However, Nito used Mina Acid on low acidity to slip through her grasp but avoid dealing any permanent damage to her tongue. H-H-H. She screamed in recoil as she retracted her tongue falling from the air to the ground. Now that is definitely going to need more than a popsicle to help her folks. Present Mike said before Aizawa slapped him over the head. What was that for man? He asked his friend confused as to the sudden slap over the head despite him telling worse jokes in the past. Recovery girl texted me and told me to slap you upside the head for her cause you made a joke about a frozen desert being used as actual medicine for a bad injury like a suey injury. Aizawa said sighing as he rubbed his temples. Thanks a lot Vlad. Thanks to your student I will probably be receiving a call from her parents later. He thought to himself in annoyance. Nezu however was simply impressed by his odd, albeit dangerous use of a Shido quirk. Back at the fight Suyu was fortunate her legs were quite strong and thanks to her large somewhat padded hands she was able to absorb the impact from the fall fairly well. Deciding not to use her tongue again she charged at him jumping in zigzags, so Nito sent globs of acid into her direction which made potholes. The holes created by this attack caused her to trip, slip giving her skin irritation where it was met. This however gave her no choice to but roll to the side to avoid a torrent of acid, thankfully for Aizawa's sake avoiding the acid potholes. Deciding it was pointless to try and zigzag again due to his pothole attack from before she switched her attack plan. She began to circle him instead trying to find either an opening to move in again or hope he reached his limit with her classmate's quirk. However despite it not being effective now he sent globs of acid in all directions around himself making more holes confusing her. At the 4 minute mark Nito has reached his limit as his arms were starting to get minor burns. This was unfortunately from his copying quirk not giving him the same resilience to her acid mina mutation quirk gave her skin. Noticing how she began jumping in place he braced himself by kneeling, though to Tsuyu it looked like he was hurt from the acid more than she originally thought. Taking what she thought was her chance she had built up enough momentum to jump straight to him to do an overhead axe kick. However he knew this would end up being her only attack plan so he used his former teammate air solidifying quirk. Creating a flat surface he put his hands against it, using it to push her aside before grabbing it on both sides. First an acid quirk and now his previous teammate quirk from the previous two rounds. This guy is like a record of the best hits from the hero course. Present Mike said liking how his fights allowed him to see multiple quirk matchups at once. Aizawa was somewhat agreeing with him wondering what his student would do in the face of basically multiple opponents. Nezu was now wondering why he was only using one quirk at a time instead of two in combination like in training. It also bugged him how Nito Monoma went over his limit with Mina Ishido Acid while boxing himself in like that. Sure you cannot be attacked easily, but that also means if she gets past those defenses he is doomed he may as well be walking in a mindfi Nezu thought till he realized what his plan was and what one of his two potential remaining quirks are. Getting back to the fight she shot her tongue at his feet where there was no acid she pulled herself midair towards him just barely avoiding the acid. However he tossed the frisbee made of air at her. Fortunately for her she was naturally more agile than most people so jumping off it was easy. She retracted her tongue and did a flip when it finally returned to her. Then she brought her foot down for another kick like earlier except instead of a direct hit to the head like before. She was intending to land just before him, then tackle him into his own acid, however he made a cone out of air getting her foot stuck in it. Finding her a little heavy he decided to throw her right away, spinning the cone as he did so making her dizzy. The acid ended up eating through the cone, luckily Tsuyu managed to attach her tongue to the clean side battlefield. Using it to spin herself off the acid side to the clean side just in time for the cone to fall apart on her, causing her to skid to a halt near the edge of the arena. Recovering Tsuyu got up while Nito's latest quirk wore off, going back and she ran at him hoping he was too tired to repel her again. While his panting was from using his classmate air quirk, he was far from done, in fact his true plan with the acid finally was ready. All the acid from earlier mixed with the concrete to create basically a lake of highly explosive liquid. However she did not know this was his true plan to finish her after he exhausted her enough to prevent her from dodging this last attack. Using Endeavor Hell Flame quirk he copied earlier, he sent a wave of fire outward. This caused the explosion sending her flying out of the arena, along with a little more than two-thirds of the arena itself. Fortunately for him he remembered to put earplugs in from his pocket while she was still dazed before, despite his short breaths. Everyone was simply shocked to see such intense flames come from Nido Monoma before midnight checked on Tsuyu Asui. While that is a relief, Izuku and Recovery Girl should be able to handle this. Midnight thought as the green-haired girl was carried off by the medbots. Now that battle truly lived up to the hype much more than even I expected with that final attack. Present Mike said but decided to keep the fact that he knew those flames as endeavors. Nezu and Aizawa also had the same idea, hoping not to provoke the hot-headed flame hero after what they saw before. Endeavor however simply remembered him as the student he passed in the hallway, not caring how he used his quirk like he did. Rather he was waiting for the blonde hair student his son surrendered to in order to see if he is actually strong or not. Other than their first fight the only other he had an eye on right now was that Izuku Midoriya student. Their fight was impressive, turning the tables like that on the other girl despite her having air superiority over them. He thought as he also though back to what she said after the fight. 
he made a mental note to get a restraining order against her in the future so she does not interfere between his son and future daughter-in-law. The damage took about 30 minutes to fix, as such they decided to do an interview of the other students. This was to get their takes on the upcoming fights to fill up time and distract the audience. Midoriya has got this for sure. I saw Midoriya helping recovery girl earlier with the injured students from the other fights. They are so cute. I hope they do not get any scars from these fights. These and many more things were said by students without of the 27 interviewed. 22 of those alone were comments about Izuku Midoriya. The reporter who was still young and new to this tried to go to the nurse's office to speak with this student but was held back by the veteran cameraman. All the news outlets know that Recovery Girl does not like cameras anywhere near the infirmary, except these new people like this reporter. As such the cameraman stopped her from making what would have been a hellish mistake on her part to make. The next fighter stepped up to the figurative plate, ready to give the fight their all. Representing Class 1B it is the Wall of Air, the breathless battler Kosai Tsuburaba. President Mike said pointing out his defensive technique and the downfall of his quirk as he introduced him. Needless to say the student was having a hard time maintaining a proper smile with such a revealing introduction about himself. His opponent representing one of the wall of manliness, a true man's man is Ajiro Kirishima. President Mike said not real time how his last comment sounded. For Kirishima he felt a tad awkward due to the second half of the statement. Mainly due to how Mina once pointed out to him in middle school how she caught some of the girls in class writing AI fan fiction of him and the other guys. This was something they both agreed to never tell the other guys in class about, which miraculously they never found out as far as the two know. Though despite saying to people how he prefers women, which for some reason he had to as him saying manly all the time apparently made them think he was into guys. But after seeing Midoriya in the girls' uniform that day, well he was unsure but decided to ask for advice about it after the sports festival was over. With a declaration from midnight the fight began with a rush of punches from Kirishima who hardened his skin using his quirk. Subiraba reacted using his quirk to make an air shield covering his top chest area, not breaking but it left his stomach vulnerable to a kick. Kirishima had to take a moment to toss it aside to move forward again, this time however his opponent covered his entire front. This however made his shield more thin, so after a dozen punches it would break. The result was Subiraba stumbling back a few steps after each break before quickly putting up another shield. In the end he was pushed to the edge before getting punched across the face and onto the grass. Though many people may call it boring compared to the other fights, it a true battle of wills as these two stood their ground against the foe standing before them. President Mike said as Kirishima helped the 1B student up. If you ever want a Kirishima, I can always help you test how hard you can get. Midnight asked him being over on the podium slightly, her index finger of her right hand pressed against her bottom lip as she gave a sultry lick. The audience were unsure of how to react, some genuinely praying for the boy that someone else gets the 18 plus hero attention. You mean training my quirk, right? Kirishima asked backed away slowly with Tsuburaba hiding behind him. All they got were a resigning shrug of her shoulders saying maybe to him or who knows, without using any actual words. Run, Tsuburaba said grabbing his opponent by their shoulder and pulling them with him before they also began to run. Midnight, if you sleep with one of my students, again, then I will send you to the hospital this time. Aizawa threatened her as this would make the 17th student of his she had slept with thus far over the years of her teaching. Till this day Aizawa and all the other staff members questioned why Nezu let her get away with it. Granted Nezu did once tell them the reason was due to her sadistic tendencies whenever she had slept with a student in the past she was always harder on them not easier. Though he can see that, he still thought it was just a sick joke the two did together to make his life harder. The next fight was one of true girl power, which was a mirror to the last battle of manliness or yeah, depending on a viewer's inclinations, hobbies as present Mike had put it. Thanks to Mike making his potentially suggestive comment about Kirishima people are definitely gonna make some Yuri comments about this next fight aren't they? Midnight thought happily while some of the other teachers thought worryingly with Midnight and cement us having to maintain a normal face through this. Alright folks stepping forward for this next fight are both students from class 1B. First off is the self-setting mannequin, the Lady of Lizards Setsuna Takage. Present Mike said waving her hands to the crowd. A green-haired girl deciding to pull a midnight and make a V with her fingers and sticking her long lizard-like tongue through the V. Oh yeah, if it is not cause of Mike it will be cause of her. The teachers except for Midnight thought with Vlad face who was palming in slight embarrassment, especially since Midnight gave his student a thumbs up. Her opponent the silent flyer, the gal of ghosts Ryaiko Yanagi. Present Mike declared as she came through her entrance normally without waving to the crowd. Midnight declared the fight to begin after looking to both contestants and getting a nod for yes. Setsuna started the fight by dismembering her body sending her parts flying at her classmate in an attempt to overwhelm her. Overwhelm her it did, Ryaiko was unable to control so many of her body parts and got head butted by Setsuna who used her other body parts to cover her head. With Ryaiko stumbling back from the head but Setsuna put herself back together getting shoved by her classmate to the ground. 
Setsuna, who had Ryaiko face on the floor with their arm twisted behind their back, bent down to whisper something to the ghost girl. As much as I want you to surrender, your ass feels way too good for me to want to stop. Setsuna said to her not being serious in the slightest while grinding her knee into Ryaiko crotch knowing she would rather surrender than make herself look like a pervert. Trapped underneath her classmate Ryaiko was unable to squirm out of her grasp, doing her best to stifle her moans trying to escape her throat. Damn it Setsuna, thanks to your hand gesture earlier if I let out a single moan people are gonna compare me to Midnight Sensei. Ryaiko thought to herself, knowing full well she would let out a moan right now if she tried to push Setsuna off of her she decided to surrender. After tapping her left leg twice at midnight question of whether or not she wanted to surrender Setsuna was declared the victor. Sorry pony, I let you down. She thought out to her girlfriend feeling ashamed someone other than Midoriya or her girlfriend made her feel pleasure. Setsuna who plan worked out well skipped happily back to her class seats while an embarrassed Ryaiko went to the side entrance she came from. Their pony was waiting to pull her girlfriend into a comforting hug, letting her know to leave impressing Izuku up to her. With a gentle good luck kiss before going out into battle pony Tsunotori was more than ready. Ryaiko stayed behind at the entrance so as to congratulate her afterwards. After that bout of female fury comes the battle of plants versus animal. Both from class 1b we have the lady from Eden's garden, the righteous garden overflowing with virtue Ibarra Shizaki. Present Mike said as she entered. The green-haired girl despite usually not approving of such vanity was actually quite happy with his description of her. Her opponent the stead from Kentucky, the charging horse that makes even raging bulls lose games of chicken pony Tsunotori. He said with pony waving to the audience wondering if Izuku was resting or watching her fight. With the contestants ready, Midnight declared their fight to begin. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku cross-dressed. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Kuji17 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.